was the Heisman Trophy winner in 1986. He left her off the ballot. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Don't look now. My last dance warrior is still alive. <laughs> still alive and climbing in the standings. Hey, welcome to the show. Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff win a crucial game last night against the shorthanded Los Angeles Lakers. Perloff, and it's not usual for us to just be reacting yeah. off of one game, especially down the stretch here of the NBA season. But this was a big one last night. LeBron was battling the flu. No Anthony Davis in this game. And the Warriors put up 70 points by halftime and won, you know, cruised basically yeah. to a victory. This is my last dance Warriors yeah. alive and kicking and may be able to find a way to get a home, a home game for the play in. Uh, there's two problems with your last dance Warriors. One, the Warriors last dance means like the Michael Jordan documentary. You have to win a title in your last year, which is tough. Maybe they can do that. The other part is they're obviously going to be back next year too. Why do you think this core is like, what makes you think that they don't want to run this right back? <laughs> I, because I think I still think it's possible for a Steve Kerr walk away. I know that's crazy because he just got a contract extension. Well, I, I, it just feels like if they actually were to win, I don't. I think this is a ride it off into the sunset. I don't know if Clay's coming back. I don't know. I feel like there's a new. I think Clay's staying in the fold. I feel like they're. I've got this vibe that they're pulling Clay back into the fold, and obviously Draymond's back, and obviously Curry's back. So anyway, you could trade Draymond. I mean, again, I think changes would be coming. Trade Draymond. Who would watch Draymond Green? Well, I mean, everyone talks about how he's such a winner and how they couldn't do this if you know if he wasn't the exactly the way he is. So, so you're gonna, and they okay. might be sick of the antics again. Yeah, what team would take a 33 year old guy who scores five points a game who makes 40 million dollars a year? Anyway, regardless, <laughs> yeah, the the Warriors, I, I the part that I do think is dangerously close to coming right is the Warriors could make a run because the 10 seed and the first seed in the West are basically the same thing. You are there is no ignore the seeding. This is a wide open tournament. This is a big win because I think if the Warriors get the home game in the play in, they're getting out of the play in. Because their opponents, the Lakers, I mean, come on, Anthony Davis. I, I tuned in last night, and Rui Hachimura is starting. I'm like, this is this is not going to work. Wait, you can't say, come on, Anthony come Davis. On, Anthony He's got da- a headache and nausea. LeBron James oh, playing with the flu, as I mentioned. Come on, come headache on. Headache and nausea. Perloff, he couldn't this is two, play. Basically, two games in a row that he's missed because he didn't play much in the loss to Minnesota. Because his of eye he, got all stretched. Of course he's up. not showing. I mean, that's the thing with Anthony Davis. When you need him, he will not be there at the end of the day. And they don't know if he's going to play in the, the last two games. It is typical. Are you surprised at all when you see the headline, Anthony Davis out in key game? Well, no, but I'm I'm not surprised. But usually it's some kind of like ankle, knee, something like that, where he stepped on somebody's foot and rolled an ankle. This time, headache and nausea. I mean, oh, what do you want God. him to do? I don't know. And then LeBron shows up to the game with a hoodie drinking tea. Oh, my God. It's like, <laughs> what is it? My kid trying to fake out of school here? What is going <laughs> on? These are professional athletes, not fifth graders. But their bodies, they, they have, they're just people. They can get sick. You realize? Yeah, this. you know Michael Jordan. Yeah, I know. Got sick and showed up and dropped forty four on the Jazz. <laughs> and who's That's bringing all I'm up Jordan now? Okay, because I thought the Lakers were. You've been all in on the last dance Warriors. I've been all in since the All Star break that the Lakers are the team, and they had been the team. They've been unstoppable. Been the best team in the league other than the Celtics since February first, and now it's all falling apart just like that. They were they were shooting up to be the seven, maybe even get out of the play it all together. They were the eight seed. Yep. And now they just they let it go by dropping two games that they probably should have won. Well, okay. I mean, but, it was home. Because they were home games. But again, you have your two best players who are battling all types of calamities. This is just really bad All luck. types of calamities? <laughs> what is happening here? They're sick. I don't know what to tell you. So meanwhile, we're talking about the Golden State Warriors beat the Lakers last night. This It would be they're careening towards playing each other in the first yep. round of the play-in because they'd be the 9-10 <laughs> seed. Yep. However, Golden State, they, they still could climb. Because so could the Sac- Lakers. So could the Lakers yeah. because Sacramento and Phoenix are 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 there as well, and yeah. they have a tough schedules coming up. So this is going to be really fascinating. I, I think one of the big things uh, and a question for you guys, who do you trust more, the Lakers or the Warriors? Because we've both talked about how, yes, despite the fact that this is the last possible, you know, two slots to make the playoffs. And again, you have to win two games to make the play in from the nine or the 10 to make the playoffs. Throw the seeds out because these Two feel like extremely dangerous teams because we've seen when they are clicking, they have the experience 
and the firepower to be able to make noise in the playoffs. Well, yes. And even though the the top seeds in the West are Minnesota, uh, OKC, and Denver. Denver, obviously, you want to avoid. But since, you know, the last quarter of the season, Golden State and L.A. have been as good as anybody. They've certainly been better than Oklahoma City. So I, I think that they'd be favored in any of those series. You, you have to knock out Steph Curry. and These are, these are longer series if they get sure. into the actual playoffs. You're telling me you can knock out LeBron and Steph Curry? I would I would bet on the Lakers and the Warriors to advance against either of those teams. So they're going to be in this mix. Well, the other part is, I think you're looking at the top of the Western Conference and outside of Denver and maybe, well, no, just outside of Denver, who proved last year that they can do it, you have questions about the other top seeds. You're telling me you're all in on Minnesota? You're telling me you're all in on OKC? No, you're nobody is. You trust the Clippers? You're telling me that you trust the Mavs. I mean, nobody's playing better right now than Luka and Kyrie yeah. in their backcourt, but I don't know anybody who says, oh, book it, Mavs are going to the Western Conference Finals. You know, so that's the other part of this is, and forget about Phoenix and Sacramento, the trust factor yeah. isn't there with a lot of these teams in the West, despite the fact that they've been putting together these great seasons. Well, right. I think the Ma- if things fall right for the Mavs, they could easily get to the Western Conference Finals and lose to the Nuggets. Uh, the, the key is you just got to get the right matchup here. You got to avoid Denver. I mean, honestly, I don't think you want to see Golden State. <laughs> if you're any of these young teams, if you want to yeah, so I trust Golden yeah. State more than I trust the Lakers at this point. If yeah. you're asking me, who do yeah. I trust more? Is it Golden State or the Lakers? This is not just because my preseason pick was the Warriors. I still believe that when push comes to shove, yeah. they are the better team. Yeah. I mean, if I gave you Golden State, is there anybody who scares you in a, in a playoff series? Well, Denver. Other than Denver. Take oh, out Denver. Do you no. think... So that's a good good place to be. What about the Lakers? Could you say the same thing for them? LeBron, say LeBron and AD get healthy. Is there anybody who's better than them? Uh, well, again, I need healthy AD and then I need consistent AD also. Yeah. And at that, I I don't know. Well, I, actually, I kind of like, great season. I kind of like the Lakers a little more because I think the Golden State could get uh, have height problems in a lot of these matchups. Obviously, you you who are their big men? I mean, Kaminga is going to hold down the fort and Draymond. You could get against a taller team that would give you trouble where the Lakers Lakers beat up on smaller teams. So I still maintain the Lakers have a little bit of a better shot because of the size. I think the size in the Western Conference playoffs is a problem for Golden State. EJ, let's throw it up on a poll if you don't mind. Who do you trust more, Lakers or the Warriors? You can go to at Maggie and Pearl. You can vote and tell us what you think. You can also give us a call at 855-212-4CBS. Now, there's one other part of this that the Warriors have to deal with that the Lakers don't have to deal with, and that is the, you know, firecracker nature of Draymond Green. And at any point, he can do something that is going to hurt your team. Have to deal with or have as an advantage? I mean, why? Some days it's an advantage and some days it's a disadvantage. That's the mixed bag. He got kicked out against the Magic a couple weeks ago and they've done nothing but won every game since then. So tell me where the disadvantage is. What's the problem? I I hate playing the results there, not the process. No, I think the process, I think that's part of the process. Like, you need firecracker Draymond Green. If you have a tepid Draymond Green, you're not winning anything. Well, he's just lucky now that somehow the NBA decided to stop calling all fouls. (laughs) So maybe this is setting up for Draymond Green. They just do not foul. They do not call fouls anymore in, in the NBA. Now, this was interesting because you know what I'm talking about. Draymond, you never know. He could come out, he could get ejected in the first quarter, he could completely leave his team high and dry, or he could play like he did last night, which is awesome, and he could be one of the reasons that they are, you know, alive again in the postseason. So here is Draymond and Clay Thompson having a conversation on Draymond's podcast um, where Draymond asked him candidly, what is it like for you when he gets ejected and when Draymond gets suspended, what does that do for Clay and extension Steph Curry? When you're not out there, it's like a piece of us is gone. We can never be ourselves and have the freedom we do on the court without you. So I know the other team is very happy you're not out there. They can they relax a little bit. They they let their hair down because our muscles gone, our enforcer, the guy, the heartbeat of our team is not out there. Okay, he continued on saying the Warriors just aren't the same without Draymond. We've been through so many battles, reached the mountaintop, been down the mountain, had to climb back up, and now we have another real shot at this. So at the end of the day, we just need you. And then that, that that like disappointment and that feeling of shaking your head that just comes from like, dang, man, we can't do this without you. And we're not the Warriors without Money Green. That's just a fact. So Draymond responds to that and he goes, like, wow, I... I really didn't know that was like, that was really hard for me to hear, you know, hard for you to hear. <laughs> Michael, why did they have this conversation eight years ago? I mean, that's a good conversation. I think Clay laid yeah. it out very, 
you know, succinctly, well communicated there. We need you. You intimidate the other team. And the moment you get kicked out, they let their hair down. Yeah. And it's more of a burden on me and Curry. And why they have not had this conversation every day since he kicked LeBron James in the junk in 2016 in the finals, I don't understand. Clay, you think Clay talks to anybody ever at any point? Clay Thompson's I probably the quietest guy. In the that NBA was beautiful the, what he just said. Yeah, I know and that's in front of a mic. And also too, if you the setup like Draymond was already like kind of led him in that direction. I, I see. I just I disagree a little bit. I I think this idea that Draymond can be anybody else but Draymond and still be Draymond, if that makes any sense, is ridiculous. He's got to be this player on. The, he's got to be on the edge. So, I mean, because so you, the reason that he's this tough guy in this muscle is because you never know what Draymond's going to do. And he's all amped up and he gets so fired up during a game. So I, I think you're, you know, you have the risk of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. If you tell Draymond, just go out there and behave, then he's not Draymond Green. Perloff, you could be throwing the titles out with the bathwater. You already have but you're not titles getting, out. You're not getting, you don't win a title without one slightly psychotic player. That's the way the NBA works. Okay, but that slightly psychotic player has to understand exactly when to turn on and turn off the psychosis. I don't think it works like that. I don't think you could do that. They could have five rings right now. They I could have five and yeah, not four. Yeah, but if, if he didn't, if Draymond Green wasn't, uh, a bit on edge. If he wasn't on that edge, I don't think they win all those titles. Like they need him to be the Dennis Rodman type. Uh, they need him to be like Vernon Maxwell was with the Rockets. Uh, they need you need a little bit of that edge. Like you can't have Draymond just be well behaved Draymond and still be as effective. There's a reason they're scared of him on the court because you never know what Draymond's going to do. Okay, but how about you get just a slightly dialed back? And not only do you yeah. still have that ring that you lost to the Warriors or the Cavs, the, that the Warriors lost to the Cavs in 2016, but not just that, you probably still have Kevin Durant for a couple more years. And we can sliding doors this thing if he doesn't tear his Achilles. You might be like have leaps and bounds in between you and LeBron James. You could have been so far ahead mm. of this thing. There are so many ways, I think, where Draymond has cost the team. So I don't Damn. think it's too much to ask a professional athlete to understand where the line is. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you said. That that sounds great in theory, but that's not how this kind of player works. I mean, you know, like you know this kind of guy. He's the pot stirrer. Yep. He's a guy who's going to fight with officials. Like all that has a positive. Why do you think Steph Curry and Clay Thompson are allowed to be these mild mannered guys through the years? It's because of Draymond. And to be that tough guy, you have to be a tough guy. You can't you can't rein it back. If Draymond reined it back, what's the point? Like, I don't understand. Like, everyone's to win saying, more. That's yeah, why you rate it back. To win more. Yeah, but you can't. You can't be You can't be Draymond Green and be halfway in. So this is the other part, though, of the Warriors that's the wild card that the Lakers just don't have to deal with. And we're asking the question, who do you trust more? Would it be the Lakers or the Warriors? And I'm still saying the Warriors, but I will acknowledge that the Lakers don't have this. You know, they don't have one player who may be in danger of flying off the handle and getting ejected. Like they, they don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Well, and they have the a Warriors much, do. much bigger problem, though, is that you do not know if Anthony Davis and LeBron James are going to be there. You just don't at this point. Well, so that's LeBron, a way. I, I think I, Davis bet, is whether or not he shows up day after day. I mean, you're worried about Draymond. No, I think LeBron has been missing a lot of games. Oh, well, that's just because he has the flu. No, he's also got this. He's got lower body injuries too. I Honestly, that was I load do, management. I thought we all acknowledged that no. was LeBron load managing. No. Oh, okay. I, I mean, listen, he has not been consistent in this run. No, I, I feel way more confident Draymond will be on the court in the playoffs than Anthony Davis and LeBron, and maybe LeBron will show up, but. Yeah, I, 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 if you're worried about Draymond, I think you're misplacing your worry there. Well, He'll show up. First of all, they're not going to kick him out of the playoffs again. They just, again, they do not call fouls in the NBA anymore. That's it. At all those games where James Harden got to go to the line 30 times and all of that, it's over. There was a game last night between the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks where the Boston Celtics attempted zero free throws and the Bucks attempted two. That's it. The directive has come down from on the mountaintop. Do not call fouls anymore. And this is what we have. Meanwhile, our question for you. Who do you trust more, the Lakers or the Warriors? I say the Warriors. Perloff says the Lakers. It looks like they could play each other in the play-in game next week. Okay, that's on the table for you. Also, Draymond Green's comments and Clay Thompson explaining exactly what they lose when Draymond gets ejected. Like we had to have this conversation a little late. If you ask me coming up, we've got major news for you uh, from the college ranks. We'll get to that in just a moment. It's Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five minute break.
4 minutes 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to the Maggie Perloff Show. So finally, Milwaukee looked dangerous last night for the first time all season against the, what well, looks like the unbeatable Celtics. I yeah. mean, the most obvious bet is the Celtics coming out of the East. 
Milwaukee shows up, destroys them last night. But we got some bad news uh, Un- towards the end of the game. They pull Giannis. Oh, unfortunately, Giannis' non-contact injury just goes down in a heap because he has a calf injury. So they're going to do the MRI. They're going to, you know, check out not just the calf, but also the Achilles. He was listed prior to the game with a left hamstring injury and then got upgraded to probable, missed a few games in March uh, with uh, some Achilles stuff, Achilles tendonitis. And Mm. so now you're just at, you know, building and building and building. Doc Rivers was asked about it after the game. I believe we have some Doc. That's a good question. Uh, hi, I would say that. Uh, but, you know, he's honest. <laughs> I think everyone uh, probably feels the same way as I do right now. So uh, we're just going to hope for the best. That was Doc Rivers asked about his concern level on Giannis's calf. And, of course, the spin doctor is in the house. Now, I don't know how bad this yeah. Giannis injury is going to be. I'm not trying to make light of it. But is this not setting up as the all-time perfect excuse for Doc Rivers and for the Bucks if they fall short of expectations? Like, well, what, what, what were we supposed to do? Well, I mean, you, you're you saying if Giannis isn't there, yeah, of course. But honestly, does he even need any excuses? Does anybody think the Bucks are beating the Celtics in the playoffs? He doesn't, I think they've moved beyond excuse points, right? It's been, I mean, it has not been uh, the gangbusters season since Doc Rivers took over. I believe after winning yeah. last night, they're now at least 500 under Doc Rivers. They're 16 right. and 16 after they started the season 30 and 13 and then fired their head coach because of the defensive issues. And now they've just had every type of issue. Right. Dame Lillard had some issues. Chris Middleton lost a tooth the other day. Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Dame, uh, I saw this yesterday, have only played in eight games together in the right. Doc Rivers era. I think they're barely a story if all those guys are there. If Giannis goes away, then we don't even need the spin doctor because I think they're completely irrelevant, right? Well, I don't know if he's going to go away, though. I yeah, don't know how I don't think bad so. this injury is going to be. Okay, so you're arguing the spin doctor will be if he does play yes. and they lose. But I, I he, think... And, and by the way, Doc yeah. would have done this for your former your yeah. team, the, the 76ers with Joel Embiid. He's waiting to spin this thing with an injury. I think it's funny. I don't think anyone's buying this spin or even like is going to even care what Doc says at this point. Because I, I think everyone's given up. I've never heard one NBA analyst say the Bucks are a dangerous team. I mean, it's done, right? Or am I, maybe I'm misunderstanding this team. It feels like the East, they might as well just cancel the entire playoffs, put Boston in the finals, and we'll see you in June. Okay, but Boston has proven that in big spots, they can fall short. I mean, they can no-show. They've no-showed game sevens before in their own building. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that's going to happen this year. It doesn't feel, with or without Giannis, it makes any difference. Uh, I could be naive here, but there's just, there's they have no chance. I'm going to go no chance for the Bucks to come out of the East this year. Absolutely no chance. So, uh, I don't know if I can go with no chance. I mean, we'll Doc see Rivers is their with, coach, Maggie. To be honest. So You're about, talking about Game 7. What if they get to a Game 7 and Doc <laughs> is on the sideline? That's a, that's in the no chance category. No, for Doc, it's really bad. If you're up 3-1, then uh, you're in a really dangerous <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you, that's the last place you want to be. <laughs> not, not good. But think about if you're... I was thinking about this from the Dame Lillard point of view. Uh, right? Dame Lillard, a god in Portland, you know, wanted to finish out his whole career there, but obviously didn't end up working at its way out. Then he ends up, he wants to go to Miami more than anything. He only wants to go to the Miami Heat. Instead, gets sent to the Milwaukee Bucks, not exactly Miami. And nothing has really gone right for them. It's been bad vibes. Dame's been, whether it's homesick or something, he's, you know, had some issues adjusting to life in Milwaukee. We know that. And now if Giannis is out, and let's say Giannis misses the rest of the season, now it's just Dame again. This yeah. is just like back in Portland. Yeah, I mean... But again, though, I think that that story had already ha- he'd already failed here. It, it feels to me. I mean, look at the teams that they've lost to. They they can't beat anybody the second half of the season. So you're right. And the funny thing is, they Miami beat the Celtics last night. My yeah, I know. It's just all of a sudden they show up and show some life. But I think the Celtics, you know, they're not playing for anything. Nope. So th- you can't really take anything away from that game, in my opinion. Uh, the uh, the funny thing too, Miami looks worse than ever. Uh, so I'm not sure Dame would have found a, a great spot to get to the finals either way, unless he'd gone to Boston. <laughs> I mean, to me, it, it, it's it's interesting. Doc can say whatever he wants at this point. You don't need a spin doctor. You're just not as good a team as Boston, even after what we saw last night. So uh, if I'm honest, I would be cautious for that reason. Like, if you have, like, did you th- who did you think of when you saw the description of this injury? Durant. Well, a, Durant. Yeah. yeah, when you have... 
they said it's the back of his calf, yeah. which back of his calf means right above his Achilles. Like, why risk it this year, right? If there's any doubt about that and he blows out his Achilles, are we all going to say, oh, my God, you got to stop this? But we're not doctors, but that is like, we just saw the Durant thing. Yeah. And they put him back in a month after he injured the same part of his leg. Yeah. If he's lucky, maybe he can get an appointment with your old doctor where you got sca- scabies from the uh, <laughs> from the whirlpool. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> maybe we can get Giannis a little bit better care. That guy was out of network. The second the word Achilles comes up, and I know Aaron Rodgers has solved the Achilles problem yeah. through medical science. He was on a new podcast, by yeah. the way. It was a little juicy. We, should, we can get some uh, clips from that. Uh, I just think the second you hear Achilles, it's as a fan, I'm like immediate panic. Well, especially when you're 6'10". Yeah. Well, I, any position. I mean, listen. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, you go down the list. You, every, I know it's much better, but if Giannis has any issues with that part of his body, honestly, like he better not come back. If he got hurt, the NBA would be so sad. It'd be, it'd be terrible not to have Giannis. Eight five five two one two four CBS. So we're talking about the Bucks, some injury stuff with Giannis last night. We'll see what the latest is with his calf and Achilles, and then also our poll question today: Who do you trust more, the Lakers or the Warriors? Start with a lot of NBA today. Andrew Bogus is here. Good morning, folks. Guys, good morning. Uh, all your headlines are sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career path with flexibility and great pay and benefits? Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. Now, you guys began the show talking about the Lakers, the Warriors, the depth of the Western Conference playoff bracket. But none of that matters because whoever comes out of the West ain't beating my Sixers. Sixers 67, Detroit 59, but the Sixers got to get going as it be with an unbelievable behind the back shot. He was falling down. He thought he was fouled. He flipped it up as an afterthought and made it. Tom McGinnis on Sixers radio. Philly's so hot, they're scoring without even looking at the room. <laughs> the win streak is six after this 120-102 decision yeah. over Pearl's Pistons. Take that, buddy. Uh, the six, by the way, we're talking Detroit, San Antonio, Memphis, uh, OKC without Shea, they, they've and Toronto. They have beaten nobody. Do you like anything? Uh, it's a six-game <laughs> no. win mean, streak for a team that sucked before six game, it. Oh, Tom McGinnis, the broadcast, felt like he was about to fall asleep in the middle of that clip. You know how you play <laughs> these hockey clips where everyone's excited? That was the exact opposite. Like, the Sixers are winning, but this is really uh, this Joel is bad. Joel Embiid, sh- hater. Joel Embiid, <laughs> 37 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists. His team stays one game behind the Pacers for sixth in the East. East Indy outscored Toronto last night, 140-123. The Clippers are your Pacific Division champs after a 105-92 win in Phoenix. L.A. started that game with a 35-4 run, even though Kawhi Leonard and James Harden were out. The Pelicans won in Portland, 110-100, so they are the sixth seed in the West at the moment. The Suns dropping to seventh, and the Mavericks clinching a top-six spot with their latest W, 130-104 in Charlotte, they've now won 15 of 17. Luka had 39 points, 12 boards, and 10 assists. The man of many talents and many nicknames, Robbie Avila, is in the transfer portal. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry Nerd, you know him, you <laughs> love him. Uh, he is likely to follow head coach Josh Schertz to St. Louis, which means A-10 basketball, which means you guys can come with me to Fordham yes. in the fall, and you can see Steph Blurry in the <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Rose Hall Gym. Rose Hill Gym. Rose Thanks, Hill Gym. <laughs> Close enough. I, I would love to do that. Yeah. Can you get us some tickets? Because that's going to be a hot yeah. hot item on the secondary market. I'll ask now. But mm. I don't ask soon enough. There is a possibility of, say, of, of getting a no. So I'll ask now, and then we'll wait for the A-10 to smartly schedule St. Louis to come to New York, and then you guys will be there. You know, oh, man, I, this is up to the A-10. <laughs> we are yeah. sunk. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Is there anything special that we can do? Like, you know, do they do anything pregame? Like, do you get to do, like, a ceremonial anything at Fordham that we can try, that Perloff and I can try to wiggle our way into? Uh, I don't think basketball does, like, ceremonial opening tips. Um, like a first pitch, the equivalent of no. a first pitch. Like our boss, Spike Eskin, got to ring the bell at the Sixers no, game. I realize that's a little rich. They do a, a 76ers podcast. Yeah. Now, there is a victory bell on campus that gets rung after anybody wins a game. Now, maybe you guys could ring that if Fordham beats 
Robbie Avila <laughs> and the St. Louis mm. Billikens. But know. that's not going to happen, so we don't know about that. Um, Didn't I, you guys just retain some big uh, big player? Yeah, I mean, relatively speaking, a big sure. player, yeah. Uh, I could get, You know what? You guys maybe could, like, intro the players and they take the floor. Not the full introduction, but just like, you know, ladies and gentlemen, here are your Fordham Rams. We can maybe get you, get you I that. I was going to say, not to, like, you know, dirt off the shoulder name drop or, you know, anything like that. Not to try to brag. But I once got to be a ceremonial coach at a Rutgers spring football game. Yeah. Highlight of my life. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Ford, I think Rutgers won awful. three games that season. Uh, yeah, clearly, yeah. it was a little of my magic. Unless I'm checking into the game for the Fordham Rams, <laughs> I'm not driving up to Fordham. Do you realize I'm how go. bad the traffic is around game time? Oh, get on the off. subway. Come on. Sub- oh, that's the way it rides like two that. hours. By the way, St. Louis. Anyone else have an issue with colleges that have the same name as a city? It's just like St. Louis. Denver. I, I've never liked college names like <laughs> no, Charlotte. I thought you were say something better than that. I thought you were going to say, why the hell is St. Louis and Fordham the same conference? Like, yeah, that's a really, like that. another great question. Hey. It just feels, I, I think no, that's part of the same geography. thing. It's just so random. Oh, oh, geography. I thought you meant because of like the no. play style, like the, the, the I mean, success New, of the I mean, program. The fact, that, uh, the fact that Pearl, I mean, excuse me, Bogus just said that let's get St. Louis on a trip to New York City. Yeah. Alone was like, what are we doing here? You These are our conference that, foes. You realize that Stanford's now in the ACC, right? Oh, I know. That's why, <laughs> that's why Tara Vanderveer, I think, quit or retired. She was, well, she's not a quitter, of course, but she was like, uh, cross country flights without Cameron Brink? Pass. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I feel that. She's got enough travel miles to last a lifetime. She doesn't need that. <laughs> Who will feel nothing Atlantic about St. Louis no. to be in the Atlantic? Who day? can name a, an NBA player out of St. Louis? I can. Uh, Larry, I can. Hughes. Yeah, Larry Hughes. Larry mm-hmm. Hughes. Is there another one? I doubt it, but it was. Uh, <laughs> I always think immediately say, oh, that's where Larry Hughes went. Also, now, big cameo feel, in a Nelly music video, yes. You want to feel old that Larry Hughes Jr. also played at St. Louis recently? What? You're kidding wow. me. I am not even a little bit. That's crazy. That's awesome. Wait a though. minute. What? Yep. Yep. Ray Allen's kid was just at Rhode Island, but he, I think he's transferring. So we're the eight ten's good at collecting younger, the sons of players. Yeah. Larry Hughes played till two thousand twelve. He's not been gone that long. Right. But old enough to have a kid already well, it's been in college. Years. <laughs> so kind of. <laughs> Uh, where were we? Oh, well, yes. then he went to Europe. Robbie Avila, so good at basketball, but can he do this? The clerk's pitch, swung on, fly ball, left center field and deep. Back is Jankowski at the wall, a three, homer night for Shea Langoliers. The killer kid delivers. Ah, the killer kid, so sweet, murdering three baseballs last <laughs> night, three homers for Shane Langoliers, the last a go-ahead two-run blast, top nine, he and the A's, beating the Rangers 4-3. Mike Trout hit his sixth homer of the season, but his Angels lost at home to the Rays 6-4, and a Christopher Morrell Grand Slam got the Cubs a 5-1 win in San Diego. Red Sox infielder Trevor Story needs season-ending surgery for a broken bone in his shoulder. Story has only played 145 games over three seasons since moving to Boston. EJ just mentioned it. Legendary Stanford women's basketball coach Tara Vanderveer is retiring. She has over 1,200 wins, the most in NCAA history. And we check at the bottom of the NHL Eastern Conference playoff picture. Now the Capitals snap in their six-game skid, a 2-1 win in Detroit. They now hold the second wild card spot, one point better than those Red Wings and the Penguins. The Flyers are two points back at Washington after taking a 9-3 beating at home from Montreal last night. Well, speaking of beating, how about your team? We're going to get to that. Do you want to discuss the difference in points between your two teams? Because yes, you won last I, night. The I Rangers won on all about the that. other days. I am not talking about that. We're talking about the Islanders and Rangers, folks. Uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about last night's game in particular. Yeah, the That's Islanders it. won 4-2. Again, that means nothing for the Rangers because they have already they already have 110 okay. points while you're you fighting for your playoff a message. Lives. Do you want to know what this is the equivalent of? Mm. This is the equivalent of like when a hockey game starts and you just drop the gloves immediately yeah. and start fighting. It, this is what happened between the Rangers and Devils a couple of days ago. <laughs> exactly. This is what the just Rangers happened between Bilotti and Bogish. It's like you've been waiting to get this one in. The since- Rangers are goons. <laughs> Pete's team was making illegal hit after illegal hit last night. I, Injuring players on their way to missing the playoffs. I will say this. If I was an update anchor, I too, like Bogus, would not slander my team. You would never hear a Knicks loss. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. DJ, you're a newsman. Or a Jet, How or a dare Jet you? Loss. I'm sorry. You I don't even come from updates. sports. You're a no, news no. guy. You've got to be totally objective. There's no one more manipulative in his update content than Andrew Bogus. <laughs> he is <laughs> picking and choosing things no, that no. make him feel good. I'm not manipulative. It's strategic. It's curated. Yeah, right. It's curated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, For the what, listener. What's the difference between manipulated and curated <laughs> and strategic? It's all the same. Semantics. Yeah. Do you guys play Connections on the New York Times? Yes. Yeah. That manipulated, curated, and strategic would all be there along with nefarious. For bogus <laughs> update styles? I'd be honored to be a, a grouping in that puzzle. 
I wish I got more of those right. I can admit. I'm usually good for like two or three. Some of them are unfair. Well, Some of them are, are ridiculous that no regular human would see the connection between those four things. Yeah, it's like you have to get into this woman's brain. Do you guys know what we're talking about? Does anyone no, do it's, this? It's like Wordle. No. New Wordle. It's yeah. like New Wordle. Yeah. It's a game you can play on the New York Times where they just have a bunch of words and you have to connect them, but you have no idea. It's a it's a grid of a four by four. And you have no idea what this woman could possibly be thinking, and you only have three guesses to get it right. Anyway. Yeah. Not for me. Bogish, I, I think with Wordle. Bo- bogish update uh, <laughs> connections. That would be oh, quite yeah. a No, no. There's there's always honor. something going on. Like that St. Louis uh, Fordham report. He's always getting <laughs> something in there that's pure bogish. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice to you guys. You love the dude. I'm going to take you to see him in person. This is good news for you, and you already poo-pooed it. Well, well, I'm I mean, trying to like, wiggle our way into it even more. Yeah. Do you realize how bad FDR Drive is going to be at 6 o'clock when we're going up to oh, see Larry Nerd? There's, there's <laughs> traffic all over this country, all right? Everybody makes it work. And maybe it'll be a Saturday afternoon, less traffic. And if you get there, you could probably coach the team. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Can we call a play like Phil Knight? By the way, the guy that's driving to Saint, uh, uh, San Antonio can't be complaining about two hours. Great traffic. point. <laughs> it's you honestly, realize the amount of traffic you're about to hit when you have to drive from New York to San Antonio to apologize to women? Through Wendy. Chicago. Well, it depends what time of day. Worst I think, honestly, San Antonio is closer than getting to <laughs> Fordham at 4 o'clock on a weekday. And you know what I'm talking about, Bogus. Well, you you again, think the Chicago loop is going to be fun? <laughs> Who knows when you're going to hit that city? Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing like upper New York traffic. Uh, besides, uh, Washington, I've, I, I've already planned this whole thing. I'm going around traffic times. You guys can't ruin my mojo on this trip. <laughs> there's no avoiding it. Yeah, we should give. We should have to give you the route there. You shouldn't have to enjoy this trip. <laughs> we have it on Why does roads. that bother you so much, Bilotti? It's a road you, it's trip. A punishment. It is a punishment that you are going to, to see Wemby. I would not have set this bet up if I didn't have a they, stake uh, that they, I wanted they, to lose. Then you have to go through Alaska. <laughs> I love Alaska. Are you paying for that? Uh, it's part of your punishment. <laughs> right, because the other part is when you get to San Antonio, you're not actually going to encounter Victor Webanyama and have any shame or uh. guilt to apologize. So the punishment is the drive, and now you're doing it like it's a vacation. I think there's... Let's not rule out a possibility of Wemby. I mean, that'd we be are a resourceful <laughs> yeah. show. We've got five brains in here. I mean, that'd be amazing if we could actually get me in front of Wemby. I, this is the point. I mean, this is what we're working tirelessly behind the scenes to try to set up. I mean, listen, Wemby can't really hide in San Antonio. If he's out and about, we'll find him because yeah. But you saw what his security did to Britney Spears. You will get <laughs> um, manhandled. Good, good boy. I this forgot has about to be that. All this has to be emails have to be sent. I'm just saying he's one athlete. I think I would recognize if he's walking along the Riverwalk. I'm like, oh, that's seven five guy. That's Wemby. I think we'll find Wemby. Wemby's from. France, like I mean, I think you don't think he spends the summer in San Antonio. The season's over, he will be out of there. I know, but we have the Olympics going on, so obviously he's got a lot to do. No, no, he's he's booked. But this is why it's got to be strategic of when Perloff actually goes. This is going to be probably more like a college football type of thing. There we go. Who's with me? Well, not me. (laughs) Bogus wanted to be, and you said no. Well, here's the other problem. Am I taking my own car and driving to San Antonio, or do I rent a car so I can fly back? What? I want you to rent a car. I, f- I care about your safety, so I want you to rent a car. So you're not, you're not screwing up your own car. There's not like get a new car, drive down there, fly back. The Ooh. smallest car there is. <laughs> Pearl off and a <laughs> Mini Cooper. Yes, the car you can make. He's it, like make six it foot four. Pace. That would be really hard. You're like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on a. I feel point. like NBA players always squeeze into sports cars. I could do it. Because they like take out the front seat and they're sitting in the back. Like is Will that how Shaq does it? I think yeah. Will Chamberlain did that, right? Uh, okay, thank you, Bogus eight five five two one two four CBS. Coming up, did not see this football beef coming at all. The number one, likely the number one overall pick in this year's draft, taking aim at somebody we didn't see coming. We'll do that next. Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back. Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. So this one is a little interesting, we thought. Um, Greg McElroy, former Alabama quarterback working for ESPN, calls games, was on with Kevin Clark, does a podcast on The Ringer, and they were talking about Caleb Williams, the presumptive number one pick for the Bears. And here's what Greg McElroy said is the one, I guess, concern, if you can call it that, he has about Caleb. I mean, Caleb Williams, from the time he stepped on campus at Oklahoma to the time he stepped on campus at SC, he has never experienced adversity. Very little adversity as far as how he was received and how he was portrayed as the next best guy. 
uh, even when they went seven and six this year or six and six or whatever, seven and five, it wasn't because of Caleb. I mean, he did his part and he did. Right. So McElroy kind of saying this could be a little bit of a wake up call if he gets to the NFL. How is he going to deal with adversity when it inevitably hits? You know, not everybody gets a CJ Stroud rookie year right. where things go so well and you make it to the playoffs and win a game. You know, if there is going to be adversity, how is he going to handle it now? Oh, there's more. Let's hear. I do wonder about is there a sense of entitlement? Is there that chip on the shoulder that's going to keep him going 10, 12 years down the road? the way it does Mahomes, who's still pissed that he got drafted 10th. Man, it feels a little bit like a leap to say that he's got a sense of entitlement. Mm. I mean, I know that Caleb Williams, they've made it clear, him, his dad, that he's always wanted to be an NFL yeah. quarterback, right? Always wanted to be in the NFL. However, just because you go number one overall doesn't mean you don't have a chip on your shoulder. So Caleb Williams fired back on uh, social media he said, let's go back to school again because I'm bored right now. He said, uh, "He said, um, you know, year one, I didn't start my freshman year. Year two, popped my hamstring on the championship game in the first quarter, lost because of my hamstring. Year three, seven and five, my last year of college ball. He believes that he did face adversity and that he did overcome it. I mean, we did see him crying in a loss after, yeah. uh, was the loss Notre Dame? Uh, was it the Notre Dame game was that he a, lost? A, a Washington game, I Washington, believe. Washington, thank yeah. you. Um, I mean, to say that he does, he's not hasn't been through adversity. I mean, sports wise, I think you'd say he has gone through some things. Uh, I don't know. Here, I have a couple issues here. Okay. Number one, you don't say I've gone through adversity. Other people say you've gone through adversity. Nobody, none of the great athletes who've come through adversity would be like are putting out a list of things that have caused adversity. That's just something like, that's such a weird self-promotional thing. Like, why are you saying <laughs> have other people talk about, it. you should not be responding to this kind of criticism. Say I've been through a lot. Athletes say that a lot. He actually listed this adversity. It's out of, I don't know. It's like, uh, the, the great adversity stories. Uh, I, I just feel, find it's weird. Like you don't need to say this. You should not be going on Twitter or responding to Greg McElroy. I mean, obviously that's not an ideal for a draft. Like it makes him sound sensitive. Well, Okay, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. Like, he should not... Just do it on the field. You don't need to get on Twitter and answer your critics. What, well, what are you doing here? It's funny because you would think that he would have already faced a lot of that criticism. He shouldn't feel like he needs to fire back. However, what, when wait, you do but, say someone has a sense of entitlement, that feels very personal. Now we're not just talking about sports. I mean, what a lot of what Greg McElroy said was obviously true. Everyone, since he came into that Texas game in Oklahoma, everyone's known he's been the number one pick for three years. And there is not a single person who cared that USC lost. Nobody, nobody was digging Caleb Williams for that. He's absolutely right. Do, will you agree with that? Everyone's oh, people like, Caleb? Caleb Williams all year long about no, his like, body language on the sideline, yeah. about, about the fact that he didn't have a lot of success, even though it was on the defense. I think Caleb Williams was getting his share of criticism for how bad the season was. For oh, I, I totally disagree with that. I think everyone's like, Caleb is awesome. This team stinks. I think that was the overwhelming narrative. Because that's the facts. No, he but, was awesome but, and the team stuck. But then people started going to body language and they were asking about character and is he a leader in the locker room? So in the absence of, you know, any on field stuff, because he still looked great on the field, I think a lot there were people, let's not pretend there weren't, who filled in the blanks there and said, Well, he's not a great leader and he sits away from everybody on the sideline and 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 took shots. I've listened to so much draft content and everyone says the same thing. The fingernails being painted, yeah, that, the cell phone mm. case being pink. I mean, it's not like people haven't gotten their licks in on Caleb Williams. I, I totally disagree. I think everyone said Caleb was awesome and he was always behind because the defense couldn't stop anyone. People are saying, oh, well, he freelances a lot and he, he feels like he's got to score a touchdown every play. And everyone first says, well, yeah, he did have to score a touchdown every play. I don't see a lot of people saying Caleb Williams cost USC that year, like real football analysis. Okay, but you'll you'll agree with there me was that all he's that gotten pink criticism. Finger. Yeah, but I mean, like, yes, there was criticism for off the field stuff and the pink fingernails, but nobody nobody blamed him for USC losing okay, that I saw. I mean, if they did, they're they're wrong well, because you couldn't blame him. I think the fact that he did, and we're talking about Caleb Williams uh, firing back on social media at Greg McElroy, the former Alabama quarterback and current ESPN analyst, who said he hasn't been through any adversity. Uh, concern that Caleb Williams has a sense of entitlement 
and whether or not he has a chip on his shoulder. The fact that Caleb on social said part of the adversity he feels like he's gone through is going seven and five my last year of college football. I think that shows he did take it personally that they were losing. It wasn't like, all right, well, you guys suck and I'm good. So later, I think he, I think it weighed on him a lot. That would be a positive for me if I'm thinking about Caleb. Right, but he's not just worried about his own stats and his own future. Call me old school. Say it, do it on the field. What are, what are you doing here? Going on Twitter and answering? He's saying, just say, come out and say, I've faced adversity. It just sounds lame to me. Man, I've, co- I've gone through a lot. Like other people could say, you've gone through a lot. It kind of reminds me, and I'm going to connect it to Danny. Danny Hurley said all these things about the Yukon dynasty. I'm like, why are you saying that? That's other people uh, ascribe greatness to you. I don't understand this self promotional. It's one thing to be a self promotional, another thing to say, I've gone through all this adversity. You're wrong. I have gone through adversity. Why are you arguing Greg McElroy on this? Like, just go out there and ball out. Well, I think. Listen, I'm not a proponent of firing back on social media. It's it's, it's so lame. It's hard to win those battles. Um, it's not even that. It's just it shows to me, like, dude, like you are sensitive. It sounds like Kevin Durant, the quarterback. <laughs> well, there's a but there is a part of it where you probably feel like you know you want to get the record straight, where you feel like you do have something to say, and we've seen this now more and more. Athletes want to tell their own story now. You say that, oh, leave it to somebody else to tell your story. Danny Hurley is out there saying we're this was the hard this was harder going back to back than it was for Duke and for Florida. I thought that was one I thought that was lame too. Like, dude, let other people say that about you're out there and saying, Well, we're the best team ever, you know, whatever. I Do mean, you realize the greatest basketball player of all time put out a documentary that was ten parts to tell the story from his point of view. Yes. There is something now where some athletes will say, Yo, I'll leave it to you guys to write my story. And there's others who are saying, No, 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 I'm the one who's gonna control this. And Danny Hurley saying, this was harder than what Coach yeah. K did. And for Kayla Williams to say, you are wrong, Greg McElroy. I have been through a lot of things, and I do have a chip on my shoulder. I, I get yeah. it. I get well, why it. Why It sounds like a thou doth protest too much. Like, why do you have to come out and say that? And even, like, you kind of said the same things. that he, He's been the number one pick for three years, and he's never come off that position. So that's what McElroy is saying. Okay, but here's the thing. And when McElroy said that he's not sure if he has a chip on his shoulder or if he feels a sense of entitlement— whether you have a chip on your shoulder, in my opinion, has absolutely nothing to do with where you're drafted. You either have that, that you are holding yourself to this super high standard, mm. and you either have that chip or you don't. Again, I'll invoke Michael Jordan. He made up stuff so that he could put the chip on his shoulder even after having all the success in the world. None of that, it's all in you. Like right. I really believe that about athletes. We've been doing this for a long time. Either you the the money and the fame only makes you more of what you already are. So you either have that inside right. of you or you don't. Yeah, you, Going you have number one overall is not going to change if you truly are a great talent. Yeah, but look at the way Tom Brady does it. Tom Brady says gets up on the podium and says nothing his entire career, and we know that that's the ultimate chip on his shoulder. Like when you have a chip on your shoulder, you don't come out and say I have a chip on my shoulder. It's just that's not really how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to show up on the field. And that's where you sort of get it out there. Like, write your story on the field. Don't be, this is so, Carla, I don't like this times, new trend. How many times did Tom Brady talk about being pick 199? Uh, years I, after he had already been goaded. So he he names his production company 199 Production. I mean. That the, later in his career. But I feel like early, like, you got to just show it on the field. Like, I, I do not like this athletes writing their own stories. It just sounds so weird. Like, if you come out and say, People come out and say, like, I should be, like, number one on this list of all-time guys. Like, that's for the outside. But that's to, not what Caleb's doing. Caleb he is kind of like he's no. writing his own. If you are, if that's not true, then let's go out there and, and just show it on the field. Do not tweet it. Well, we're going to get both, right? We are going to get both because he is going to be on the or, field for the Chicago Bears. Or we'll get the opposite where he proves that McElroy was right. If he's 7-10 and 10 and is, doesn't deal well with that, then McElroy will prove to be right. Yeah, you know, there's a, another part of this. I think that this applies to almost every single person who comes into the draft of any sport because most likely you've had a lot of success which is why you're getting drafted so of course you're going to go to a maybe a bad team and now you're going to have to start from the bottom that's everybody number uh, one picks number 199 picks I don't know if I was Caleb's agent i say you know what just let it go and let's just go play football we get an update on one of the biggest jobs in sports next You're in a five-minute break.
Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Destined to get knocked out by Jake Paul. She's destined to film it. 
They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Well, it's official. John Calipari says goodbye to Kentucky, Perloff. Welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. This uh, was a little bit of a back and forth over the last 24 hours after the news first leaked. But yesterday, Cal from his house, presumably, talking into a camera, said a couple things. Mostly, it's time to move on. This is a dream job. It was my dream job. Anybody in our profession looks at the University of Kentucky in basketball and said, that is the bluest of blue. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice. Okay, and said he, it's time to take on a new challenge. It's been a dream, what we've been able to do. But 15 years, time for another voice, and you know I'm always going to be a fan. Thank you. Okay, so Cal leaving did not say Arkansas in the goodbye video Perloff, but obviously that's what it's going to be. Mm. Five-year deal, about $8 million a year. And still the question, I think, twofold. How much success can Cal have mm-hmm. at Arkansas? And then who's going to take over the Kentucky program? Let's just pause on Cal for a second yeah. because I think this is setting up to be the John Calipari revenge tour. I think that mm. he's going to go to Arkansas now and say, uh, you don't think I'm going to use the portal? You don't think I'm going to find a different way to coach. This is like when people doubted that Nick Saban would ever win national titles using offense as opposed to defense and run the ball. Yeah. Do not underestimate John Calipari. I don't think his best days are behind him. But then why didn't he do that at Kentucky? I think because he kept getting these freshman one-and-dones, and and I think he was saying, I can get you to the NBA. With Arkansas, I don't think it's, hey, I'll get you to the NBA. That's not really the bar. You know, that's not the... That's not the tradition there of, oh, go to Arkansas. Now you're going to go to the NBA. Whereas Kentucky, that's what it became about. And I think this is maybe a wake-up call for Cal. I got to build my team a different way. Okay. I mean, he's been doing it well. He should have made that adjustment five years ago at Kentucky. I, I understand. I think he's going to run into some of the same problems. He's going to have all this talent, and he's not going to be able to keep it. And, yeah, I, I think I think at a school like Arkansas, you might, one out of every four years, you might be a real title contender. At Kentucky, you were a title contender every year. I expect him to be in that sort of Realm. Like, he's not going to make Arkansas a top five team six years in a row. I just, I can't see that happening. Well, I mean, again, a lot of NIL money and building your yeah. team a slightly different way. I mean, UConn, it cause, you know, could be a top five team for the next six years, and they might not have a, you know, number one overall pick. Yeah, th- but I see, I can't see John Calipari doing that kind of thing. I feel like he's going to have five number one picks come out of Arkansas. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, it's what I've seen. You don't think he's going to go out and get these superstars anymore? Um, I think you're always trying to get, I think you're always trying to get superstars. Even yeah, but, if you are Danny Hurley, even if you are, you know, um, like the Jay Wright, Danny Hurley kind of yes. having a l- late first round picks all over your team. I don't know. I, you're assuming a lot that John Calipari is going to be able to change. And yeah, maybe you might strike gold where some guys stick around, but age is the most important thing for a team right now. Uh, so I think he'll be good. I think they'll be a top 25 team. I wonder if he'll just have more disappointing tournament runs for some of the same reasons. I like your theory that he learned his lesson here uh, by getting kicked out of Kentucky, but I, I worry they're going to have all this talent. The other thing, too, the SEC is insane right now. It's just utterly – it's competitive in a way that it's, I never remember. I mean, how many top 25 teams are in the SEC? So he's going to have to deal with Tennessee. He's going to have to deal with Florida. He's going to have to deal with whatever Kentucky is next. Uh, has to deal with Bruce Pearl and Auburn. So it's – I don't think it's – Alabama and Nate Oates not go, is not going to Kentucky, reportedly. So that's another great program. I just think it's going to be hard for him to dominate, like, say, six years ago at Kentucky. Yeah, but see, I don't know if the bar is now dominate. I, I think, mm. again, I think you're going to get a bit of a revenge tour. I don't know how much you can dominate, but I would say this. I think Cal's going to win a title at Arkansas. Okay. I do. And I think that, you know, maybe he's right that it was just time and a new voice and all of that, but... You know, it's not like he's old. But he won one at Kentucky with every great player coming through there. So why why is this going to be different? Well, because that's the challenge of having all these great one and dones. It's you're trying to create chemistry in a really short amount of time. And I'm not saying the guys who went to Kentucky are selfish by any stretch, but, you know, you are out there to try to get to the NBA. That was always the first and foremost thing. Not that they weren't trying to win. I remember De'Aaron Fox crying his eyes out after they lost. I mean, they these guys are one and done, but they still cared. But they knew they were moving on to these greener pastures right away. 
maybe this is a different type of guy. Maybe the pressure to recruit those guys yeah. isn't the same at Arkansas that it was at Kentucky. You might get into a real question here, too. How good of a basketball coach is John Calipari? Because we honestly haven't even talked about that much over the years because, there's, you know, yeah, when right. you have Devin Booker, Jamal Murray, and Anthony Davis, you're not talking X's and O's. You're talking about, oh, my God, look how good that guy is. So it's interesting. Can he get back to being UMass John Calipari where he really did coach up to guys? I don't know. It's a transition. I, I am a, lo a little more skeptical than you. You think all of a sudden you're going to get this hungry, young John Calipari. I worry, are they going to get a lot of stars in Arkansas with all this NIL money and run into get bounced in the Sweet 16 like they've been doing? Or even before the Sweet 16. I, I, don't, I mean, he couldn't do it at Kentucky. Why is this going to be easy at Arkansas? They are acting at Arkansas like they just won the lottery getting John Calipari. Right. I mean, it, you're walking into just such a different type of environment where Kentucky, I think, felt that way. Certainly the first, you know, what, eight years or so, maybe the first 10. And now it's, oh, you know, geez, Cal's back, you know, and and here comes another first round exit. Right. I, I think the vibe just totally changes. And I still think you're going to get guys who are maybe NBA level talent, just maybe not a starting five of them. You know, because Cal still has an ability to get you to the NBA, which is ultimately the goal. Even if you make a lot of NIL money, it's not anything right, like which the pros. Is, which is definitely a negative. That's a, a, no, it's having NBA guys seems to be a negative in today's college game. I know that sounds uh, antithetical, but obviously you, if you have top picks, you have a problem in no, some weird way. But I don't think so because if you, it just depends on what type. Paolo Bancaro can still get you to the Final Four. Dalton Connects can still get you to the Elite Eight. I think you can still find a way to have NBA talent and high-level NBA talent and surround them around the right guys. It's just uh, not five. The, your starting five flips over every year. Dalton Connect was a 23-year-old transfer from Northern Colorado. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, and Paolo Bancaro got to the Final Four. where He, he didn't win a title. I, I do understand what you're saying. There was a if lot Cal of guys. If had gone to a Final Four, he'd still I mean, be listen, in Kentucky. He might have top ten, two top ten picks on his team last year, and they did nothing. You know, Reed Shepard and Dillingham. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Like, I, He's really got to change his formula. I don't, I'm not sure he will. I'll bet you that all of a sudden, Arkansas is going to have the most expensive players, and they're going to have five-star freshmen come in. And I probably won't fill them out to go all the way in my bracket for that very reason. So we're talking about John Calipari yesterday puts out the video officially saying goodbye to Kentucky. Uh, we saw a couple of days ago he was pushing his dog in a stroller, dog yeah. stroller. Got people a little upset. There was also, though, uh, somebody left a sign on his front lawn in Lexington. Thank you, Coach Cal. That's nice. And I was wondering, do you think John Calipari actually put that sign out himself? Uh -huh. Well, there was a report <laughs> that he went back to Kentucky after the Arkansas offer and said, I wouldn't, hey, why don't you match this? I don't think he necessarily, that, that video that sounded nice, that new voice thing, do you really think that that was genuine? I'm not sure that this is, I don't think he wrote the script here to leave Kentucky this way. Uh, no, probably not. But I think he knew he was, I think the he knew he had one more year to really prove it. And why do that? Why not just... Leave for yeah, greener leave. pastures. Right, right. And I think he fell into a pretty good spot here. Stayed in yeah. the SEC. You've got a, a school with deep pockets. You've mm. got you know, boosters who are committed. Got this is rich, great. rich, famous boosters, too. Now Jerry Jones on, is uh, yeah, but officially that, on board. And that, But that's something he's had to deal with because the boosters, and we've heard, we've talked about, you know, the boosters are a big part of what runs Kentucky the men's basketball program. So, you know, I think he's got a lot of experience, too, trying to maybe, you know, make those guys work for you as opposed to them getting too involved in the program. Yeah, I I, I, I like your optimism for Arkansas. It'd be fun to have a new powerhouse, but I, I just worry that they're going to have great regular seasons and falter in the tournament because there is a formula now. I mean, Danny Hurley is putting it out there. You know, have five, a starting five with maybe a little bit of NBA talent, an old guy, a big guy. Just You can't do it the way that Cal Parry did it forever. Why you think he's going to change just because he got essentially fired at Kentucky, I don't know. I mean, the guy, you're teaching an old dog new tricks here, Maggie. So the next thing is, who is going to take over for Kentucky? Uh, and this is obviously one of the premier programs. So right now, the odds-on favorite is Scott Drew from Baylor. He just got a, a somewhat new contract. Nate Oates is still second, even though he already put out a statement saying he wasn't going to do it, um, and he's staying at Alabama. Richard Patino is third, so Rick's son, Richard, who's at New Mexico. Then Billy Donovan. Uh, who's also said multiple times, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, if I were Billy Donovan, I might reconsider that.
The Bulls are a mess. Did you see what happened last night? Did you guys see I what happened it. It was, last night? It happened to the Knicks. It was against CJ's Knicks and Pete's Knicks. It was an abomination. Mm. I mean, can we grab the highlight? Can I filibuster and you guys? Because I'll try to say it. I'm not going to do it justice. It's all over the internet. We'll get that in a moment. If I was Billy Donovan, this is something that I would consider. The problem is... The, M- the college basketball lifestyle right now, you hear from coaches, they are just so burnt out because with the transfer portal, you are just constantly in recruit mode. Not that they aren't normally, but there's just no rest. You know, there's you just don't get a moment. At least in the NBA, you get a, maybe an offseason. Oh, yeah. There, there's no way Billy Donovan's <laughs> leaving the pros. And the fact that Chicago kind of likes him, too. So forget it. And also, you know, they're bad, but they're not that bad. Right. This is not like they're irrelevant. They're they're kind of in limbo. They're like floating around five hundred every year. But I do think that there's a, at least a chance. It's not the worst spot. I would not if I'm an NBA coach and my team wants me. There's no way I go to college for that very reason you just said. Seems like a, a tough job right now. He may Billy Donovan may have wanted to reconsider because again we're talking about the Kentucky job now being open and Billy Donovan is fourth. Best odds, according to betonline.ag.org slash net backslash URL <laughs> pie in the sky. Um, but Billy Donovan is fourth in those odds. The thought had to cross his mind last night when he watched his team pull this. There's not moving as he steals the drum. And Andre Drummond knocked it free. And Tory Craig! Oh! All right, that highlight's going off the rails, but it was a breakaway where Torrey Craig throws the ball, presumably to himself off the backboard, going for a highlight reel dunk in the middle of the game, Perloff. Yet he didn't realize that Andre Drummond, his teammate, was right behind him. They both go for the putback slam. They both miss the putback slam, and Drummond got hurt on the play. Uh-huh. You're so, telling me Billy Donovan didn't think about Kentucky at that moment? Uh-huh. No, I don't think. I mean, maybe at Memo de Raleigh. I think Billy Donovan would rather do anything than go coach Kentucky right now. Right? Like, that's not, that's not a, would you make that move? I'd think about it. Oh, God, no. I think Kentucky is not going to be a fun job. See, that's it's funny because I, I know you've thought this and, and you've been saying it, and yeah. I, I get where you're coming from, but you can say it's not a good job. It's w- literally one of the best, if not the best job in college basketball. So uh, how, not do we, now. how do we reconcile those two things? Well, because, like, because you said that they should reach out to Dawn Staley. Now, Dawn Staley's yeah. been mentioned with the Charlotte Hornets. Now, that makes sense. No, that makes no sense. That makes so much more sense than Kentucky. Kentucky, you you mentioned it like, oh, you're dealing with the boosters. You're dealing with expectations. You're dealing with these five-star kids coming in and leaving immediately. Well, Kentucky, you can change that as the coach. You decide which type of team you want. Yeah, but I think it's going to be hard to turn Kentucky into Villanova or UConn. I, I just think that that's a, I think it's a tough job. I would not really want that. But people are, were hoping Cal Perry would have done that years ago, and he wouldn't. It doesn't mean that somebody can't. Cal Perry just didn't. I, I would say for Dawn, I mean. Why not the Hornets? Uh, oh, just, they're kind of bereft of talent, too. Oh, my but. gosh. You're asking to go to NBA no man's land where you are going to get fired because everybody there gets fired after a couple of years. And that is just asking for that's total irrelevance, complete and utter. I'm sorry, Charlotte. You know this better than anybody. And but you're you, basically being set up to fail in a loser franchise. Well, NBA, though, you could turn things around pretty quick. I mean, they or, Orlando's a. a a wagon right now. I know, but what makes you think anybody is making the right kind of decisions in Charlotte? I mean, that's how it works. You bottom out in the NBA, then you you quickly come back. And do you think that Don Staley, as a first time NBA coach, would have the type of power and cachet to have the say to turn around that program? I, that that franchise, well, no shot. But honestly, like, do you, would you? Okay, even you're right. It's far from perfect. But would you want to deal with Kentucky boosters if you're Don Staley? Sure. I mean, I, I'd Good much luck. rather do that. I have a blast with that. <laughs> well, I mean, why no, do you think nobody wants this job? I don't see. That's the weird thing. You're also going to get a major pay raise. Kentucky's paying about eight million a year. Yeah. That's way more than most NBA coaches are making, to be honest. Except for like Popovich and you know the Steve Kerr. You're, I would you're expect a lot of money. I would. I'll bet you they get five no's on this job. 
But yet, it's. would you agree with me that it's still the premier job in college basketball? No. Why? Because the boosters? Well, I mean, obviously. That's every high-level program. N- the, well, then why are they getting five no's? You think Duke gets five no's? Duke had a plan. Um, I think North Carolina would get five no's. I, I think Kentucky Kentucky seems it's basically kind of what happened with Calipari. I, I just feel like Kentucky's a little bit down right here's now. Here's the thing, though. Has Kentucky actually gotten a no yet? We've well, had I guys mean, who have come out and said, no, thank you. But did they actually make a call to NATO? Have they actually made a call to, listen, Danny Hurley, that, it, it, that the timing on that's just not right. Yeah. But have they actually gotten the no's yet? Because I am i didn't hear anything from Scott You don't Trey. think they're calling Danny Hurley? I have no idea. They're definitely calling Danny Hurley. They're definitely reaching out to Danny Hurley. And they're reaching out to Jay Wright. And they're probably reaching out to Billy Donovan. Okay, but and that's I not a And I assume all those guys say no. Th- that's not a negative. That's- well, I'm just saying it's not, it's a little bit flawed right now. It's not. It's not. You said the best job in college basketball. I don't think so. I, I'm not exactly sure why, but I bet you a lot of guys are turned off. I mean, honestly, like they're going to hire Scott Drew. It's not exactly it's a championship winning. Head yeah, coach. I know, but it's not exactly like. He's oh man, we got we sport. got Scott Drew. Wow. He might you be really the perfect think- thing for him. Yeah, but it's obviously not not the ideal choice. It's not like Kentucky's going from John Calipari to Scott Drew and be like, wow, what a huge upgrade. Well, but here's the thing. I would actually rather be taking this job than what John Shire did because John Shire, you're taking over for Coach K, you're coming off a of Final Four, um, and he's done a fine job so far, but um, we'll see. Kentucky, the fan base, they wanted Cal out. They want a breath of fresh air. This isn't, oh, please don't go, Coach K, stay forever. This is... You know, uh, don't let the door hit you. Right, right. That's the point. Like, it's, that's, it's a, a, that's it's better a, for the next guy. No, it's huge expectations immediately that you're going to be very hard to hit. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to be on, on you immediately if you don't have great success there. And they're, you're probably not going to. First of all, I think your team's got a little gutted for next season. I mean, Scott Drew gets there. He is facing a lot of criticism very quickly. Okay, but again, we're talking about who should take over the Kentucky men's basketball program now that John Calipari made it official last night that he is indeed leaving. Um, I don't think the fear of failure like that works for coaches and athletes the way it does for, like, quote-unquote regular people. I, I don't think that that prohibits them from taking jobs. I think they feel like, oh, I've been waiting. I deserve this job. I've been waiting my whole life for, for this opportunity. Well, then... Okay, then why do you think Danny Hurley would have no interest in Kentucky? He just won two titles with UConn. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, you can't oh, you leave they... after two. Literally, you won a title on Monday. The Nato's. Nato's. I, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I'm I not think. Exactly you, sure. I think in today's game, you can build a powerhouse in a lot of different ways, and guys want to win. You know, win. I think Nato thinks he probably has a better chance in Alabama for some reason. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. We move from Kentucky to the Dallas Cowboys next. The latest with C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, the stars of the Cowboys. We get to that in just moments. Don't move. It's Maggie and Perla. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining
three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Maggie, you hear the music, you know what that means. Something's going on in Cowboy Land, which actually, it, nothing's been going on in Cowboy <laughs> Land, ironically. But the nothingness of the Cowboys offseason is one of the big storylines of the NFL right now. <laughs> What's the latest negative thing to come out of Dallas, Maggie? <laughs> well, actually, this one, you might want to breathe a little easy if you are a Cowboy fan. TMZ caught up with CeeDee Lamb, who is heading into the final year of his contract was asked him, uh, is he going to be in Dallas next season for sure? Here's what he said. <laughs> Will you be in Dallas? Yeah, I'll be in Dallas. Okay, so there you go. C.D. Lamb going into the final year. He's going to get paid about $18 million, then would be a free agent in 2025. And he's just one of the guys that the Cowboys have to make a decision on contract-wise. They clearly are not interested in giving Dak Prescott an extension. That has become abundantly clear. Oh, really? Justina Anderson keeps reporting that they're still working on a deal. I, I'm not 100% out on Dak okay. retired because it's a, it's a disaster not to sign Dak. Well, we've talked about that for a while, and yeah. yet no contract. We talked about it last year. Now we're talking about it this year. Yeah. I mean, fool me once. I, did, I don't know if this thing is coming. And then you have Michael Parsons yeah. on top of it. So Parsons has this year and then next year before he's a free agent. They picked up the fifth-year option, obviously. Yeah. Um, and they have to decide... Here's the one thing about the Cowboys. It just feels like they're always a year too late with these contract Mm -hmm. extensions, and it ends up biting them in the butt because CeeDee Lamb 
just got way more expensive for you. If you had just signed them last year, maybe you have something, uh, some type of manageable yeah. salary. Now he's leading the league in receptions and all this, and his yesterday's price is not today's price now with CeeDee Lamb. Right. I mean, the issue is it's hard to have a $50 million quarterback and a $30 million wide receiver. That's why Tyree Kill's not in Kansas City, Devontae Adams not in Green Bay. So I think Dallas was going to have that problem. Then you have the $35 million pass rusher, too. Right. Well, if they had signed the, Dak Prescott earlier, maybe it's not 50. Maybe you're getting him at 40. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> but now he's got all the leverage in the world. If you have CeeDee Lamb, maybe now it's not a $30 million wide they receiver. Maybe him. it's a $25 million wide receiver. Yeah, maybe. But the funny thing is, if they had signed Dak last year, he'd already be coming up in two years anyway. Okay, I, I don't know. two years. Well, yeah, it's well, that's what we're talking about here. P- Parsons is actually out in two years. I, I don't think there's any way out of it. I, I think the Cowboys are going to be stuck at 12-5 and five for the rest of our, our, <laughs> our life. There's just no way. Life. How do you build a team here? They've just screwed up this whole thing. I agree with you. They've screwed it up. There's just no smart plan. There's no strategy out because... I do think if CD says, basically that quote says he's not going to hold out. Uh, he could hold in, but he's, it doesn't sound like he's holding out. Regardless, they have an impossible situation here. And I don't love this uh, move on from Dak thing and take the biggest dead cap hit in the history of all leagues combined. <laughs> like, what, what are they doing? So, or, you know, and then Schefter last night on ESPN says they might draft a quarterback in the first or second round. Like, what, what is the time frame? How are they building a champion here, Maggie? Great question. That's your Cowboy Quickie. All right, so let's pause on the Schefter thing for a moment because the idea that the Cowboys would take a quarterback in the first round. Well, what are they picking, 27th? Right, so you're talking about Penix or Knicks or I don't know who's going to be there late in the first round. That makes a lot of sense, actually, when you put it This makes no sense. Dallas is 24. You're you're an all-in team. Why would you ever be going, uh, you know, drafting a quarterback in the first round who's definitely not going to see the field? You have issues at other positions. You've got issues at offensive line. You've got issues at receiver. We can talk about the linebacking core. I mean, you've got some, you've got holes you've got to fill, not a quarterback situation. But you have, you have a big quarterback situation. Is it that different than the Patriots picking Jimmy Garoppolo in the second round uh, to get a guy in at the end of the first round? They had three Super Bowls under their belt at that point. I just think that they, and first of all, CeeDee Lamb, great, big player, Micah Parsons, one of the top three defensive players in the league. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a team. So who's playing quarterback next year? If you say Michael Penix is sitting there at 24, you're not tempted. What about this year? I'm talking about this year. I don't. Next year is next year. You still have Dak for this year. and Presumably, you want to try to win with him. I, I don't understand why you would a first-round pick on a quarterback when you're the Dallas Cowboys. Are you not trying to win this well, season? That that first-round pick then does is sitting on the bench. Yeah, but the thing is, any position, what positions do you want? Linebacker, uh, wide receiver? Offensive line, whatever. Uh, receiver, sure. Well, they've been drafting a lot of offensive linemen. Maybe it's time to move off that position. But the regardless, never have too many. Regardless, uh, you need to get that quarterback. You could get all those other positions later rounds. I mean, that's why the Packers took Jordan Love. You At a certain point, this might be their best chance. There's no quarterbacks in next year's draft, and the Cowboys are not going to be in position to get them. So if you're thinking, who's going to actually be the quarterback next year if Dak Prescott is not on the team? That is something that I address next year, to be honest. I, okay. I, Because I, I think that the only way the Cowboys have a prayer if they want to move on from Prescott is you got to hope you get a situation where another veteran quarterback wants to move on from their team or somehow shakes through, and then you bridge that person to try to get to your – and then go into the draft. Because, again, what a mixed message you would send to your fan base if you draft a quarterback in the first round if you're the Cowboys. Like, well, what's the mixed message? They, they're not resigning Dak Prescott, which I don't think is done. But say right, they right. don't resign him. There's no mixed message. It's Dak is gone. No, no, I get it. But then what are you saying about this year where you have a lame mm. duck coach, mm. a lame duck quarterback, you're supposed to be all in and you're going to have first round pick guys sitting on the bench. That's going to be a major distraction. That sounds nice. But the reality is you you got to use those first round picks on quarterbacks. That's where quarterbacks come from. All the other Second round picks. Like who? Jalen Hurts. J- Jalen Hurts, and there's one other. Uh, Jimmy. Uh, generally, though, first round, if you look around who are the good quarterbacks, almost all of them are first round picks. No, I understand. You got, you got to use that draft capital on quarterbacks, and you got to overinvest in the quarterback spot. So I think this they is They did a gr- trade for Trey Lance, who was a former number one pick. I think this is a pick. great, great quarterback draft. I think it's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be an all time quarterback draft. Next year is not, you know, you're talking about guys like 
Quinn Ewers and, and Shador Sanders, like Shador will probably go number one. There's not going to be anyone left for Dallas. Can I tell you another reason why, if you take a first-round quarterback here, why the Cowboys would have so royally screwed this up? Do you see what quarterbacks are going for right now if you can actually be lucky enough right. to trade one of them? You realize how much draft capital you would be able to get back if you had just thought this thing through mm-hmm. a little bit more. And if you actually did draft Michael Penix, who's going to be, what, 24? He's yeah. going to be starting age. Then, then you get five years of a reasonably priced quarterback. Great. That's awesome. You could have traded Dak Prescott for two first-round picks. Mm. Yep. And you foobar that. If this is indeed how it goes and the Cowboys do actually take a quarterback in the first round, you could have had Dak on the open market. You think and, two- and, 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 and selling Dak coming off of an MVP caliber season, and you could have gotten some major draft capital Two first-round picks for Dak Prescott. Maybe. You think Definitely the NFL a- views it? Nobody likes Dak Prescott. He's the most criticized quarterback in the league. He just came in second in MVP voting. I'm well aware of that, yeah. and I was, I've always offended him, but you, the guy gets a lot of criticism. You don't think Deshaun Watson got three, Russell Wilson got three? You don't think that a first and a second, a first this year, and maybe a maybe a late a late first next year or second no, next year? No, no, no. I, I don't think so. And you don't. He's not like you're taking and on a huge contract. Up, and he's coming up on a huge contract. There's, you know, now I also I I think no one wants to trade for him now because they know they're going to have to pay him. Well, so. but it's it's a quarterback who is a playoff caliber, borderline on Super Bowl caliber quarterback who'd be available. Dak Prescott would love to get to free agency or get traded somewhere. I think he would relish it. Maybe not traded, but that would have been the smart thing for the Cowboys to get something back in return. You take Michael Penix at, what is it, You're talking about trading him last year or right now? I would have traded him this offseason if I knew I was getting a quarterback, if I was all zoned in and zeroed in on getting a QB. Because next year you can't trade him. He'll, he's off your books. Um, yeah, I, I still think having a cost-reasonable quarterback solution here, because otherwise you're really in trouble next year. Because if Dak is a free agent, which, again, I, I'm not giving up on the fact like the Cowboys are not that dumb. Are they really going to have that much <laughs> dead cap and no quarterback next year? If they don't draft a guy next year, and they're coming into the 2025 season with Cooper Rush. Well, it wouldn't be that. Well, uh, I mean, who is this free agent that you're getting? Well, I don't know. I don't know the next person who's going to shake loose. I don't know the next Kirk Cousins. You might end up like Indianapolis where you cycle through uh, 38-year-old Philip Rivers and Matt Ryan. Oh, I'm not saying it's ideal. I just think that's what they would do. And I think mm. it, I think it would be a waste to take a quarterback in the first round this year. Let me put that up on the poll, EJ. Should the Cowboys take a quarterback in the first round of the draft at Maggie and mm, Pearl? That, again, uh, you're talking about polls that are that is a little without context. Okay. Um. Yeah. How about con- considering the Cowboys have not signed Dak Prescott to a contract extension? Would it be smart for them to take a quarterback in the first round? Okay. Uh, getting closer. Okay, again, I feel like that poll We need CNN alone, to come and do our polls. I feel it. like that poll, I think it's a little bit of a cheat code. Uh, uh, I think, should it be, would you draft a quarterback in the first round if you were the Dallas Cowboys? How about, that's, that's what if put out, would you take a quarterback in the first two rounds? No, we're oh, so, no we said weak. first round. Well, Schefter said in the first two rounds, but... And that, that was the report that started this. Like, would you invest okay. pretty highly in a, in a quarterback? You're talking about different, way different expectations immediately when it's a oh, first round. So you're round fine with a second, second round, round quarterback. quarterback? A second round quarterback, I'm okay. Late second round quarterback, Spencer Rattler, fine. You, but your first round picks, mm. you know, it's different with the. What first if they round trade picks. up to 33 to get Penix or Knicks? 33, so that's the second round. Yeah, like you know, like where like Will, Will Levis was. Now you catch me out of technicality. We'll we'll iron that well, out. Bogus is here with headlines. She- Schefter's point was like they might really invest a quarterback. Like they might trade up in the second round. Like and I think or they might use that twenty four pick. You might not need that twenty four pick. I that's what I'm saying. Like they might get try and get up and get Knicks if he falls out, or they might try and get Pettix. And I think it's smart. Why not get this guy with some cost certainty? Maybe at thirty one. Bogus has headlines. Hello. Hello again. So even when the Bucks win, they lose these days. So I mentioned it. Boston, not a team to trifle with by any stretch. Giannis is on the deck now behind the play, and I'm not sure what this is all about. An 8-2 run. He's not getting up. Dave Kane on Bucks Radio, not in-game load management. Giannis uh, was heading down the floor after a made basket when he just sat down, started reaching for his left calf. The Bucks are calling it a strain for now. An MRI coming. I bet that TV gig sounds pretty good right now to Doc Rivers. You know, he's honest. I think everyone uh, probably feels the same way as I do right now. So uh, we're just going to hope for the best. The Bucks did beat the playing-for-nothing Celtics 104-91, snapping their four-game skid. 
They maintain a one-game lead on the Knicks for the two-seed in the East. New York winning in Chicago, 128-117. Jalen Brunson at 45 in his second straight 40-point game. The Magic, meanwhile, dropped to fourth in the East with a 118-106 loss in Houston. The Warriors rode 26 threes to a 134-120 win at the Lakers. They're now a half game behind L.A. for ninth in the West. The Clippers wrapped up the Pacific Division with a 105-92 win in Phoenix. The Mavs smoked the Hornets 130-104 to guarantee they can't end up in the play-in. And Anthony Edwards, a career-high 51 in Minnesota's 130-121 home win over Washington. The T-Wolves stay tied with Denver atop the conference. Nobody wants to see Tar Heels fighting, but all's not well in North Carolina men's basketball country right now. Raymond Felton was on Theo Pinson's podcast, <laughs> angrily responding to Rashad McCann. This is like Mad Libs. This is Tar Heel Mad Libs. Dissing Roy Williams and their 2005 title team. It just kills me good. Then for him to, I heard for him, me to hear him say that we hated on him. I had 15 points at half and then my coach decided that it wasn't going to be my show because it was Big Man's birthday. Okay, cool. So I was already decreasing my scoring and passing more because the n- on my team was haters. I actually picked the roster. I actually helped recruit all of these n- that was on the team. When you say let the team huh? Up, what, let him what, what? Huh? <laughs> like hate it. How many times I done fed you the ball? You know what I'm saying? Made sure you got it because I know you was our best score. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, man, I I, I wish him all the best. Just leave us out of your mouth. Here's a question. Is Rashad McCann still walking around <laughs> with the crown on his head? Was he wearing a crown he, or a mask? He's wearing the crown was not on anymore. He, he in this clip he's he was finally wearing a took hat. it out. Yeah, he's wearing a hat in this one. Okay. It was he wearing a mask at one point too? Probably. He's had a couple different he should call our friends over at WWE. See if he can get Call us. Well, I mean, we had some pretty nice uh That's true. Costumes <laughs> at, at WrestleMania. I was wearing a luchador mask. Maybe that should be his next mask. I, I'm surprised he hasn't gone down that road yet because <laughs> this guy's like, it's Halloween every night. That's my one thing about McCants. And the other is, why? Because it was Theo Pinson's birthday? Is that what he said? No, I think he's 2005. Is that t- a, I think he's talking about Sean May. Yeah. Oh, so, Sean May's so that, birthday. that championship game, May had a huge game. But I guess he's saying, hey, I was playing great. But Roy Williams started spamming Sean May because it was his birthday to get him most most outstanding player. Wait a minute. The, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever yeah, heard about. It's my also a nineteen-year-old complaint. This is about the two thousand five season. Wait a minute, it's Sean May's birthday, April fourth. Right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely was his birthday. Yeah, I feel like I remember that. Who would ever do anything about anyone's birthday when we're talking about sports? That makes no sense. I will say though, we talked about this before, and I think I mentioned it with uh, I forgot what we were talking about, but I said how there was an example of you know John Stark shooting two for nineteen and yeah. Russell Wilson throwing the ball at and on the goal line. I do think coaches definitely have favorites that they they spam. Oh, Pete certain, Carroll, you mean? Like right, for yeah. Russell Wilson? Yeah, I, I think that's a thing. Now, <laughs> not as a birthday present. Not as a birthday present. <laughs> birthday this is present. a new thing. This, that's definitely a new thing. But to me, I thought Haley Van Liff staying on Kaitlyn Clark was that. So I, I feel like maybe that's where Rashad McCants was going, and it went well for Carolina, but he's still bitter about it. I can't believe he's bitter and they won. It's one thing if you are like a Richard Sherman and you're talking about games you lost and, you right. know, that that cost the game. Haley Van Lith staying on Caitlin Clark could have cost LSU the game. Uh, excuse, yeah, in some ways. They actually won and they're still beefing. That's a bad sign. It's terrible. But, I mean, Rashad McCants was the whistleblower that kind of led to all those recruiting violations for Carolina. So there's bad blood that's been spilling for decade, over a decade over this. It was whistleblower. I think he was more like. <laughs> wait, I think he was more like uh, loose lips sink ships. Like I that thought kind that. Of thing? I don't yeah. think it was strategic to tank the program. <sighs> I, I thought. Think it was. I thought they were trying to pin it on him, and he's like, everyone was doing it. I thought it was a cover your own behind, not I'm doing it because I think this is a real outrage. Like whistleblower oh, implies no, he, was, he was definitely the, a moral oh, conundrum. Yeah. It wasn't moral, but he definitely was like. They're, oh, you guys are going to, yeah, you're right. But still, like, he wanted to get the program in trouble. Yeah. And was, he's still, and now we know why, because he didn't get more touches in the National Championship the game. It's more rat than whistleblower, <laughs> I would say. This is a deep dive into North Carolina basketball. We love beefs. I, How do you I even find beefs. this beef? Like, what website's running this story? I saw this on Instagram, and I was like, wow. I mean, he called him a, a D. Yeah. I was, like, it was, it was, I was like, Raymond Felton feels this way about Rashad McCants from... <laughs> 20 years ago? <laughs> and Felton's sitting back in a chair and Ray's uh, gotten a little puffy 
Yes. Well, post -play, I, mean, I was, I was, waiting, I was waiting for someone to bring up that angle of the story. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you guys are looking at McCants? <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not what my social media timeline was talking about. <laughs> Felt was like that when he was playing. Right. Um, also, Theo Pinson has a podcast. We're yes. jumping the shark here. He does. I mean, he's... Get off our block, Theo Pinson. Barely in the NBA, so, I mean... He's got time. Media, yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's only... I mean, basketball podcasts lead the world in beef. <laughs> It That's does. why I think they exist. Every single one is you suck, he sucks, I suck. This is why you suck. It's also, also a lot of Pete's lying. Also, 16th book. You suck, I suck, we suck. This is why everyone sucks. It's also a ton of lying. Children's in, book. In the same podcast, he also said that uh, Rashad McCants is among the greatest scorers he's ever played with, including Carmelo Anthony and Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> Yet they're about to throw down right, over the 2005 title that they won. <laughs> he could be a distant third on that list. I mean, he also mentioned Russell, Russell Westbrook could be fourth in that list. Uh, on a more serious note, the winningest coach in NCAA basketball history retiring. Tara Vanderveer stepping down at Stanford last night. 38 seasons with the Cardinal. She won 1,216 games total over 45 seasons at Ohio State and Idaho as well. Ronald Acuna Jr. stole three bases, scored three times in the Braves' 6-5 win over the Mets last night. The Dodgers won in Minnesota 6-3. Tyler Glass now tying his career high with 14 Ks over seven. And the Royal win streak is five. They're down in the Astros 4-3-10. and 10. Salvador Perez, the game-ending RBI single. The Nashville Predators clinching a playoff spot with the one point they earned in a 4-3 OT loss to the Jets. The Kings failed to clinch their spot, losing in Anaheim 3-1. And the Wild eliminated from contention with a 5-2 loss to Colorado. Again. I don't score. do every score <laughs> in every update. If you'd listen, you already knew that. Plus, you made me do Rangers Islanders last hour, so it's not coming back here. No, I want it back now. No, you're not in charge of things. You can be bringing the Islander pullover today. Just, no. Just, just so you know, the Islanders beat the Rangers and beat them good 4-2 to last night. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do one sports update, and then Pete will have an alternate sports update. That's right. He will also do. I mean, grasp another uh, straw here, man. Your season's <laughs> been a failure to fire your head coach. You beat the Rangers on a Tuesday while they're playing on the string. Congratulations. I have, I have a ton of straws. Yeah. <laughs> Notice, by the way, big ranger flag went up yeah. in my neighborhood. It's time. Last couple days. It's time oh, for their uh, early round elimination. Come oh, up. my gosh. Beat them good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that I'm was so good. glad someone mentioned that. That was like, beat them good. That was like 1940s <laughs> old-timey. <laughs> you beat them and they beat them up good. Brooklyn right. Dodgers beat the, beat the <laughs> New York Giants 4-2. to two. They beat them good. Mm. I'm saving some of the other stuff for the next update when Bobby <laughs> doesn't do it again. I have to interject again. Gil Hodges is a three-run home run. It's like Pete, it's like Pete's, <laughs> here he, here he. It's like Pete's doing the Lord's work today. He's like, somebody's got to update the hockey score. Oh, Sheesh. here we go. <laughs> you guys didn't understand that God is an Islanders fan? Come That's on. right. Everybody knows that. In the that. 70s, maybe. Yes. Well, the are, 80s, we done, are we done, Pete? 80s, pardon me. 80s. Are we done? Is the update done? Yes, Okay, done. throw it back to Maggie then for me. <laughs> back to you, Maggie. Thing. Thank you, Pete. And only Pete. No, and Bogish. Thank you, guys. Coming up, we've got Perloff's NFL draft rumor of the day. We'll get to that next. You're in a five minute break.
Perloff. Perloff is uh, keeping track of every single NFL draft rumor for you. Yeah. So you don't have to. He's scouring the internet. What do you have today, Perloff? So there's a lot going on here. The many rumors that all of a sudden, I love this one. The Bears are going to try and trade up to get Marvin Harrison Jr. to pair him with Caleb Williams. But I think we have to pay homage to the Godfather right now. Okay. Who's that? So Mel Kuyper, of course. Got it. Uh, invented mock drafts, is the man. So he came out with his final, what he said on his podcast would be his final mock draft of the season. He's just going to update with no, news and notes the rest of the time. And I'm very He's nervous. He's Mel really mailing it in. I mean, I don't, <laughs> the I, draft isn't for another two weeks. Well, I, I, do I expect a, three more mock drafts before then. Come on, buddy. But you can't just keep, have seven mock drafts and then say, oh, I got it right. Because, uh, you know, at a certain point, if you have seven mock drafts, you're going to hit every pick. Okay, so he has number one, obviously, Caleb Williams. Number two, Jaden Daniels to Washington. By the way, report Daniels is spending two days with Washington next week. Drake May, number three, to New England. Marvin Harrison, number four, to Arizona. No trade. And then number five, here's his first trade. Vikings use their extra round one pick to move up to number five to get J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback out of Michigan. Surprise you, Maggie? What do you think? I thought at first that McCarthy might be the Will Levis of this draft, that he might be the guy who slips to day two. It's looking like I will probably be wrong about that uh, prediction, but I thought some of the McCarthy climbing up these draft boards was just a little bit of a smokescreen, but apparently not. Well, I think that five is low for McCarthy, because I think it's odds on that he'll go four, hmm. which is interesting. But here's what the, the part that's really making me sad, really depressed. Uh-oh. I have a bet how many quarterbacks will go in the first round, Four and a half. I have over four and a half. That means five or more. And EJ has under. And Mel screwed me. <laughs> what are you doing, Heard that Mel? Before. He has four. He has Bo Nix, the Oregon quarterback, going number 33 to the Giants. And then he has at number 37, Michael Penix going uh, via trade to the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. Of course, it makes sense. The Rams need some youth at quarterback at a certain point. What are you doing? 33 and 37. That's practically first round. I'm not running gassers. If a quarterback goes 33, that's the nope. extended oh, first round. You gassers. are running gassers. 33? 33. Why? Is that day one or day two? That technically is day two, but it's day one-ish. It's day <laughs> it one adjacent. Definitely 33. day two. If there were 33 teams in the league, then that would be day one. Yeah, sure. If there were. Yeah. Then, then that's great. When there are 33 teams, then we'll revisit that. But for now, you'll be running the gassers. And you know what? It kind of makes some sense. 
you know, not about whether Bo Nix or Michael Penix are going to be good quarterbacks. They could be great quarterbacks in the league, but kind of makes sense that those guys don't generally get taken in the first round. Well, Bo, you know, no, no, Bo no, Nix that's... is a six-year starter. You know, no, no, Michael no, no, Penix but... has major injury concerns. Sometimes those guys do fall to the second round. Yeah, but I mean, you, why would you take a guy 33 and lose a year of control when you get him at 31? Well, because like, the... That, I mean, I don't think anyone trades up to... I, has there been a the quarterback York, who's went 33? The New York Giants are, don't generally make great moves. That's why I would believe this. I think the move to do... I think where I'm hoping I win this bet is somebody wants that fifth year and trades to 32-31. The teams that are 32-31, and 31, the Chiefs and the Niners... Uh, then you got the Ravens. Those they they don't need anything. So those those guys can trade down. If I'm uh, if I really want Michael Penix, I, I I'm not de- I'm not dead on this draft. I still feel like people are going to be attracted to Penix because the dude. Here's the thing: he ran a four five five forty. Doesn't mean anything, right? But it shows that his knees are in one place. Yeah, but when he's running against air, what what's going to happen? It when just he- shows health. No, I get it, but yeah. at the same, it's it's like. You're asking someone to make a big bet on a quarterback who definitely has an injury history. But I feel like if you could run a four five forty, then you're in decent shape. The other part about the making sure you get the quarterback in the first round to get that fifth year option, what is that fifth year option really doing if you want to start that quarterback right away? Because if you're gonna start them, you have a decision to make after year three. And if they're really right. good, you're thinking about paying them big time after year three to get ahead of the ever-increasing quarterback salaries. Well, it just gives you, I think you have a little more breathing room. You don't have to go Kyler Murray after year three. Uh, you know, listen, the Niners have to go. They have to resign Brock Purdy. Sure. So, I mean, I think there's... But you, they, they want to. Well, yeah, but you never know. Say you got, say you get him at thirty-three, you are forced into an absolute decision after year three. At least you can, you could definitely go th- after year four. It happens all the time. Sure, it's happening right now with Tua. But again, I, I think the best case scenario is that you get a guy who you actually do want to pay. You're getting a yeah. Justin Herbert. You're getting a Joe Burrow. You're getting a Josh Allen. Right. You, you're running to pay these guys. I mean, the bottom line, the first round is a lot about money. Like you, do, you know, there was a great point by Daniel Jeremiah, NFL Network. Don't draft the tight end in the first round because right. then you're going to have to pay him a lot more than you're paying any other tight end. So I'm saying if quarterback's the most expensive position, there's a reason to draft him high. You're going to get a bargain for five years. That's a huge deal. Meanwhile, the tight end that would be going in the first round, according to Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft, EJ and Bilotti's New York Jets. Brock Bowers. Go. I hope not. The, I, I want <laughs> Bowers. I really want Bowers. I think that he's exactly what they need. There you go. Pay, uh, paying a lot for a tight end. 855 cbs It is Wednesday, and that means great debate. Oh, we got a good one for you today. Love this one. And we think you will, too. What are we debating? Comes your way next. Sit tight. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break.
Who knew that Perloff not only oh. owned this? Dwelling mystic has returned from his spiritual journey to shed light on the cosmic truths that elude us. I've delved into the depths of the earth and the depths of my own mind, and let me tell you, the revelations are mind-blowing. It's time to bring the wisdom of the cave and the wisdom of the jungle to the forefront. With me as your vice president, you can expect a leader who's not afraid to embrace the unconventional path to enlightenment. I'm not just a quarterback, I'm a sage who sipped from the sacred brew of ayahuasca and communed with the spirits of the cosmos. So, this election, let's make transcendence the ultimate victory. Vote Aaron Rodgers for vice president, and let's embark on a journey of spiritual awakening for America. Paid for by the committee to elect Aaron Rodgers for vice president. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. a violin prodigy. Her full name is Maggie the Stallion. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. It is Wednesday, which means we do the great debate around here. Let's hit it, Pete. The Great Debate Series. Today's topic... Very fun. A lot of coaching news kind of in the ether. Got us thinking about all-time great coaching rants. All-time great coaching rants. And we will debate this right now. Parloff, you want to go first? Oh, sure. Okay. So there's a, there's a bunch that you just you hear the line and you know automatically what people are talking about. To me. Uh, so the one that I chose was Dennis Green, who was a very successful coach in the NFL for a long time until he got to Arizona. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals in 2006 blew this lead against the Chicago Bears. It was a tough game. It was prime time. It was embarrassing. And afterwards, he went up to the podium and said this. The Bears are what we thought they were. They're what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull bull we played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. <laughs> <laughs> they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. 
Now, the amazing thing about this, it sounds <laughs> so like he's like a, after a championship game or something. It's like week six. <laughs> <laughs> They're one and four. And the question was about how they did a nice job against the Bears offense or something. And Danny Green, like if you actually sit back and logically look at what he said, it makes no sense. It's like, why do you think we went out on the field? What? <laughs> and crown them. Crown. Nobody was crowning the Bears anyway. I think the Bears did have a really good season. But it was just... Uh, it, it was inspired how he went off on this. Obviously, it had nothing to do with the question. Uh, and you guys will have good ones, too, but nothing's going to make as little sense as Denny Green. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I will go next. So it's all well and good now for the 49ers, but we forget how dark things got. Five straight years missing the playoffs after they fired Steve Mariucci. They go to Dennis Erickson. Then they went to Mike Nolan. Then they went to Mike Singletary. As the interim coach, and after a loss to the Seattle Seahawks, he was not happy with Vernon Davis and J.T. O'Sullivan. Okay, I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else, rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. Cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. I want winners. I want people that want to win. <laughs> so good. Mm. Mike Singletary, unfortunately, did not do a lot of winning as yeah. the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> and that gave way to the Jim Harbaugh era, era part of me, where uh, they went 13-3 and three his first season and really turned things around. So Cannot Mike do it, Maggie. <laughs> cannot Can, win with him. Cannot do it. Cannot do it. Uh, that's my favorite coach rant. It's our great debate for this Wednesday. The best coaching rants of all time. EJ, you're up. So Dan Hawkins ran so that Coach Prime or could walk <laughs> so that Coach, Coach Prime could run. We're yeah. going to Colorado 2007. Dan Hawkins, head coach of the Buffaloes, not happy with the letter he got from parents who were upset that winter break was cut short for the guys to come back and play for spring practice. The boys only get two weeks off before they start their summer conditioning program. You know, normally they get three. Well, we gave them a week at the start of the semester rather than at the end. But here's my point, okay? It's Division One football! It's a Big 12! It ain't either murals. You got two weeks after finals, you got a week of July 4th, and you got a week before camp starts. That's a month. That's probably more vacation than you guys get. And we're a little bummed out that we don't get three weeks. Go play intramurals, brother. Go play intramurals. Like a laugh track with that. Well, I was on the best damn sports show, period. The only place where I could find this. Oh, pod. okay. That was a laugh track. Right, right. Uh, but. Oh, that was. Well, it was a live, it was a live audience that was reacting yeah. to. Oh, to, I was wondering. I was like, the media is really uh, no, following no, no, no. it up here. No. Yeah, no, it was a live, live audience reacting to Dan Hawkins. Go play in the murals, brother. Go Did play in the murals. Perfect. What I like about that one is it starts so calm and then just drops. Uh, this is our great debate for this Wednesday. The greatest coaching rants of all time, Andrew Bogish. Uh, I take you back to September of 2007. Simply put, a man and his mullet. That's why I don't read the newspaper. Because it's garbage. And the editor that let it come out is garbage. Attacking an amateur athlete for doing everything right. And then you want to write articles about guys that don't do things right and downgrade them, the ones that do make plays. Are you kidding me? Where are we at in society today? Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a, I'm not a kid. I'm a man. I'm 40. will live forever thanks to Oklahoma State head coach uh, Mike Gundy. He was specifically angry that day about a story in the Oklahoman about his one of his quarterbacks who may or may not have had a bad attitude. And that led to, after a win, one of the most famous lines in college football history. And I remember hearing yeah. that for the first time and thinking, wow, I wonder what 40 is going to be like. And <laughs> yeah. here we are. Yeah, yeah. You're a woman. You're 40, Maggie. <laughs> 
Uh, and and what is it like? You kind of want to start shouting at people. Yeah, yeah. That's actually kind of <laughs> what it's like. At newspaper writers? <laughs> well, uh, whoever. The funny thing about Mike Gundy, though, is actually pretty smart because he will be 40 for the rest of the time. He could be an 83-year-old coach, and I always think of Mike Gundy. <laughs> he's 40, and he's a man. <laughs> but, right, like he, now he, he's 55. Like, time stopped for Mike Gundy. And also, the hair of the mullet looks exactly the same, too. Yeah. Wait, how... No, no, he's 40. I, he's I know he turned 50 now. recently. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry, he's 50. Uh, like 50. I remember he turned. 52 or something? He's How long 50, was it? and everyone made a big deal about it. It was like everyone brought that clip back. <laughs> but what I like about that clip and, and some of the other ones, you just say, I'm a man and I'm 40, and everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like yeah. the shot, the drive. It's got like a shorthand. Yeah, it was. I would argue crown their bleep also, yeah. like certain ones. And, and I think what I imagine what Pete's doing too. All right, so today is great debate. Greatest coach. Coaching rants of all time. Pete, you have the final say. Okay. Uh, none of these uh, clips happened without Jim Mora Sr., who set the tone in the 90s when he was coaching some awful teams. This clip is from when he coached the Saints. And one of our friends, Brian Jones, I believe, was on this team during that time as well. So have at it, Jim. We just got our <laughs> totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively we couldn't make a first down we couldn't run the ball we didn't try to run the ball we couldn't complete a pass we sucked the second half we sucked we couldn't stop the run every time they got the ball they went down and got points we got a totally kicked in the second half that's what it boiled down to it was a horse performance in the second half horse i'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed coaching all, we're all, all our coaching did a horrible job the players did a horrible job we got our kick in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. That clip at least gives you some details <laughs> on, on some items. So, so yes. Jim what Moore, did they get kicked? Clip. Because I don't think we've been bleeping out no. ASS. Wait, have we? <laughs> where's the line? No, that's a different one. That's the Colts. That's, that's not the Colts. That's this one. Yeah. That's uh, playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah. We'll yeah, you got to go. Playoffs? We didn't do no. playoffs in the list. Playoffs? That's the greatest. Of course, Pete went old school. No, Pete, Pete went, went with original. the Saints. Honestly, he went with the better one. Diddly no, Poo no, no, is no, no, way no. better. You can write the word playoffs question mark and everyone knows. You're, there's six commercials with him yelling playoffs in the mic. Well, that's fine. I went with the one that I think has a, is longer and has a, has a, just a great setup. Though. That's Diddly Poo. Diddly yeah. Poo is the best. <laughs> you, and is then, it the longer one size matters here? <laughs> it does, yes. Okay. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's really the width of the brand. <laughs> okay. So with the girl. <laughs> Your cup for a change. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just think that if you're going to go diddly poo, <laughs> but then drop all the curses is the best. But he broke down every aspect of what went wrong and, and, he, and gave you some information as well. I thought it was very informative. <laughs> it was long and informative. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it. Beat it. I, 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 it's like a, it's like a meeting that we have at our bosses, long think, and informative. Me and my uh, America were thinking the same thing. I was like, "Wow, I didn't realize he said all this stuff." Now let's get to the playoff line. <laughs> Everyone says the playoff line. I, I gave you something that no one else said. agree. Played I totally out. agree with Pete. Played out. Yeah, this yeah. is a better one. Pete was right. At, how well, Bruce Bochy didn't get in here? What are we doing? Are we doing the most original rants? Or are we doing the most iconic rants? Who's the best? Said best. Best. So there you and go. You're playoffs. Play- you could you could have picked playoffs pro off. That I know, but I, went, I figured somebody I'd get do crown there bleep so somebody else could do playoffs. And I'm a man of <laughs> course. is a martyr. He, he took you, Denny Green. Anyway, you know, I did two of them. I mean, listen, there's a bunch of commercials. There's a commercial out right now where uh, with Jim Mora. Well, there's Jim Mora, and then there's Kevin Hart and Steph Curry and Allen Iverson sitting around, and they start saying playoffs too. It, you got to say playoffs. Oh, you want that whole clip? I got it here. Hang on. And that was a disgraceful performance, in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave them the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. What's that? Uh, Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Both are great. It's amazing how high his voice gets there. (laughs) That's wild. (laughs) The funny thing, too, is Jim Morris. Playoffs? Co- yeah. He's talking not- about playoffs? <laughs> you kidding me? He's not playoffs? like a, he's not a wild man either. He's kind of he seems like a nice guy. Like, Jim Moore is not an angry, like, Bobby Knight type in any way. Right? Uh, like, you guys remember Jim Moore. Yeah. I mean, when I, I remember when I was pulling this clip, I couldn't believe how mad he was at Peyton Manning in this press conference. He, there, there are, like, four references to, I cannot believe we threw four interceptions in this game. Yeah. And we've thrown four pick sixes in the season. Who does that? I'm like, wow. 
He it's, wasn't going to be around for a long talk about Peyton like that. In the early 2000s, you could still call guys yeah. out. Not anymore. So there yeah, you go. That's our, uh, point. that's our uh, great debate this week is the greatest coaching rants of all time. That was fun. We uh, I, Do we have some of the other ones, too? Because Herm Edwards, is, it feels like he has five. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Herm. But uh, meanwhile, you are welcome to weigh in. 855-212-4CBS. 855-212-4227. You can also hit us up uh, on Twitter at Maggie and Pearl. If you want to watch the show, YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio and Twitch.tv slash CBS Sports Radio. In the chat, you can leave your favorite coaching rant. Okay, lots more to do, including some weird moves here by even one coach's standards. Didn't like this one. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. minute remaining.
45 seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Using your phone while you're driving could kill someone. Put the phone away or pay. Paid for by NHTSA. Good reminder. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. All right. I got an ethical dilemma for you here, Maggie. Okay. And now, the great debate was brought to you by NHTSA. Oh, great debate, of I course. Uh, we're doing the greatest coaching rants of all time. We'll jump back into that second because I need I need the advice of a woman on this one. Okay. So Scotty Scheffler is a huge favorite to win the Masters. I saw that. Like the biggest favorite yeah. since Tiger. Yeah, so, t- you know, he's, he won in 2022. He's won two out of his last three tournaments, I believe. He's on fire right now. I mean, as on fire as Scotty Scheffler can be, he's a bit low-key of a person. <laughs> but his wife is due, and he has reportedly said that he will withdraw if she is in labor. Uh, so let me ask you this question. Uh, ironically, there's another top 20 golfer, Sam Burns, who also has his wife, who is expecting next week. If you are giving birth, Mm -hmm. would you expect your husband to leave the Masters to come by your side? He's from Dallas, so I assume she's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Would you want him to pull out of the Masters to come to your side for the birth of your first child? Oh, it's their first child? I believe so. Let me double check that. I I thought they had a kid. Didn't we watch them in full swing have a kid? Maybe not. I'm reading Golf Digest. Scott Scheffler's wife, Meredith, is pregnant. His couple is expecting their first child by the end of the month. Oh, boy. The first one's tough. I mean, I only have one, so I can only speak from that. But, oh, gosh. Okay. For Scotty Scheffler's wife, I think this is the life you've chosen, right? Your husband's a professional golfer. This is one of the big majors of the year. I'm not sure that she would probably be that devastated. Unfortunately, he's probably chosen golf over her or over other important family members many, many times because athletes tell us they have to be selfish to be professional athletes. Like you have to sometimes put your sport above loved ones. Um, any other man in America, not okay. I would say the world. Uh, oh, so, so it is okay for Scott Scheffler. I think Scheffler maybe, yeah. but I just don't want all men now to think, oh, I can skip this one too <laughs> because I, okay. it's not the same. But to be honest, I uh, this is going to be very tough. It's going to be so, very, very hard. I think it's lame. I think he should play out the Masters. Because what do men really do in that delivery room? I mean, men, a few yeah. of us here have been there. Yeah. We're totally useless. You are useless. We're totally useless. Well, and I mean, honestly, you're, you're, you're doing more by winning the Masters than by <laughs> sitting there and holding your wife's hands. Yeah. Well, That's what the, the drugs are for, Maggie. You don't need us. <laughs> I know. I was on a lot of them. Um, the drugs are great. <laughs> and I would not want to have done it any other way. But yeah. by the way, and I would, I actually, I think most athletes would not do this because a lot of NFL quarterbacks have had this issue and have, they've actually played. But Scott Scheffler is so family oriented, just based on everything you've seen. I feel like he really would withdraw to go do this. So I, I think it is a little like sport dependent. I, I hate to put the cop out there. If you're a baseball player and you got 162 of these, I think you can take a week off. Yeah. I think it's okay. I think you go on paternity leave if you are, you know, uh, even an NFL quarterback, at least it's one of 17 games but with the playoffs. I can get it. Uh, or if you're a football player, if you're a golfer, you get what? F- four majors. That's it. Yeah. And um, the Masters being the crown jewel of the four so yeah and also a course that you know you can win on well the other part too is it's a finite amount of time it's not like oh we got to wait for the season to play we got six more months it's like you know that this thing is only happening you know weather permitting from thursday to sat to sunday and then you're done and then you can take some time off 
So uh, I think Scotty Scheffler yeah. should probably still go, still play the Masters. And also, this is a limited time window. He's 27 years old. He only has 24 more years to be at the highest competitive <laughs> his prime. Well, maybe 28. Uh, because, uh, you know, he, he could go like Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the other thing, too. He, his wife could be like, you know, you're going to be there next year, too. However, this is the thing. You really do want a lot of help right away. In some ways, right? Because mm. when the mother's with the baby, there's not a lot that the dad can do in terms of like maybe feeding the baby or whatever. It depends on your situation. But you've got to be the eyes and ears and the gopher on everything else. But do like, you really want your husband, uh, you would say, oh, can you go get some sandwiches? And he's like, I got a two-shot lead over <laughs> John Rahm and you're making me go get sandwiches. He's going to be grumbling the whole time. Do you really no. need an annoyed husband around when you're trying to... Have this baby in, in the first few days. special moments, yeah. No, you've got to put on a happy face. I, I'll never forget when I, uh, when we first had our, our, our kid, uh, when Lucas was born, my husband, we just didn't know what we needed. Like, we mm. had a list of stuff, but you never really know what you need until the kid arrives. So he was just back and forth to, like, bye-bye baby or whatever, yeah. and we had nothing. And he was, he must have made 16 trips. I'll be honest, I... I shouldn't say this because I don't want to let women behind the veil, but I think most men would be fine if they didn't really meet the kid until about a year and a half. <laughs> I mean, I've heard that. Yeah, that's, not that's sort of that's sort of the cliche about it. Scotty Scheffler is not helping anything in that in the hospital. Well, babies are boring. That's why. I mean, they're cute, yeah. and you got to keep them alive. No, but... I was very personally. I was very involved. But yeah. I can see a lot of men. <laughs> Bogus just lot... gave you a look. <laughs> Bogus, that am I lying? Am I told, turn. Should I have not said that? I just don't think you should speak for most men would not want to meet their kid for the first 18 months. That seems like a stretch. You don't, th you don't find the first not. year a little boring? Uh, Everyone it was not does. not boring. Oh, yeah. It was, it's eventful. Yeah. But they can't do anything. No, right. When, right. When they start to move, when they start to walk around the house and then they could get in real trouble, that's when it gets, that it gets really exhilarating yeah, by the way, in a dangerous two, kind of way. Two golfers at the Masters, including the favorite Scotty Scheffler, his wife's do any day now. And he said he would leave the Masters to attend the birth. Good for him. Do you really mean that? Yes. Oh, God. Yes. I, what this, is wrong with this people? This is one of my, this fact, might this be my the least favorite is, conversation. Yeah. You would Thank leave you. too, Bilotti? You're damn right. Without a second that, thought. That, you don't never have a first uh, chance to be with your firstborn. Front, first row, WrestleMania. Kid. Front row WrestleMania. Yep. <laughs> Front yep. row WrestleMania. Not, That's a little different. A, this is not a debate. What if it's a game? What if your What if it's a game seven of the World Series or something? Oh, where am I the, playing it or just going? If you're to playing, it? no. Yeah, if you're no, an athlete, no. if you're an athlete, uh, what if there's circumstances that are so unique that an athlete has a really no, compelling it, reason? You, family first. Here's That's the bottom thing. line. I wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't think I would be on par offside on this one, but I. I am just a little in this sense. The first couple days of your kid's life is really, really important, obviously. But you're with the kid for the rest of its life. You're not going yeah. anywhere. You're not going to get a pack of smokes and then you never see the kid again. So you, it's you. You might be missing this one moment, but you've got the rest of the child's life so, in your life. Let right? me say this before anything else yes. out, out of my mouth. I think this is a personal decision. I don't think this is a right or wrong thing. Right. I don't think Scotty Scheffler staying and missing this makes him a bad whatever. It's just I feel sh I know that I would not even consider the other alternative. Right, and In he my, isn't right. either. Right, he's like, gonna. He said he would leave. I'm going home. I'm well, leaving. Okay, what if it's a team situation no, where no, you no, could listen, let you let your team down? This, this is not Bowl. the first conversation that this has happened all the time, and yeah. we've always had this conversation. I've been run through all of the what ifs. I'm not <laughs> missing my kid being born. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I can't give you a sport like it's the Super Bowl, and you're the quarterback, and you let your whole team down. There's no. So there's no. No, uh, no that's interesting. Like. No. Uh, I, I commend you for your, yeah. uh, you know. It's also 2024. We've had people who have, like, scheduled C-sections sure. or whatever to, like, not have this be a thing. Like, maybe that's on the table. And the, my wife might say to me, listen, you can go. She might not care, but yeah. I want to be there. Right. Sometimes you can't play God like that. Sometimes you can, but right. sometimes you can't. Yeah. Um, so you okay? So you would force a C-section no, no, so you could get out forced, there? But I think but, but people get have done there. that. Yeah. No, there, no. There, there's, like, people have... And I, because I, I also know that you can't just go. Oh well, we should have had this in the off season. It doesn't work like that. Second either. child. No, 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 that, How about second child? No. Saying that you should have done it in the mean, off season, I think, is very tough. Not everyone gets to perfectly <laughs> exactly. plan exactly what's right. going. Obviously, on. the Scheffler family did not plan this well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the Masters, it could be. It could be 
early. It could be a couple of weeks, you know, days or weeks late. Like you can, when it happens, it happens. And you, and I would go. Yeah. I mean, at least if you're a golfer scheduled for the PGA, I mean, really, it's just <laughs> the, the PGA. Yeah. The players. Yeah. 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 Or the, the FedEx the cup. Um, you don't have to go all the way across the pond. What if lots of people are depending on you? Say you're the quarterback of the my Chiefs. wife and my child <laughs> are depending on me. They win. Oh, right, let's put that up as a poll because I think you're being way too black and white about this. I think there's got to be a scenario for both you and Pete. No, there's there's no got to be scenario. some scenario. Zero. No. Zero Game scenario. seven of the NBA that's Finals. That's my family. That's my family. That's the uh, people I live with. That's that's the people that look rely on me. How about this? What if your wife said, it's okay, go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You say, what about like, that? No, no, no. Thank I still want to be here. Yeah, I no. still don't think I What would. if your wife said, I really want you to go? Well, she's like, get out of here. <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. She's, look, no one's I mean, going to say look, that. The baby, the baby is born, right? I mean, they're, they're, afterwards, if you talk about a day or two and she sometimes needs the time to relax, then that's another story. I'm not, I'm talking about the specific moments yeah. right. in, the, in, the first, in the first few hours. The birth. Know? Yeah. 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 Listen, I, and I might, two hours later, I might go, all right, I'm going to go pitch in game seven of the world. So I'll be back in four right. hours. No, no, but no. Like, I'm not going to be that. Be at the, I'm going to, if she's in labor, I'm going to the hospital. And I'm being, I'm staying there through the birth of the kid. Okay, let me give you this scenario. Nope. It's Saturday. Way, we're talking it's about Scotty Scheffler and yeah. another. Was it the other? Uh, Sam Burns. Sam Burns both yeah. have wives who are due, yeah. and it's Masters Week. Okay. So what if you're up five shots on Saturday? I'm being serious. You're up five shots. <laughs> you're about. You have a great chance to win the Masters, and your wife goes into labor Saturday night. Out of there. Out of there. Where's my bag? Listen, Perloff, they've said Oh, you're killing leaving. me. They're you're leaving. killing me. You know how hard it is to win the Masters? Do you know it's easy to have a baby. Do you, you know how many people have babies? <laughs> <laughs> Tons of people. And it doesn't take that much skill. It <laughs> doesn't take that much skill. That's funny. Don't. I mean, it takes skill to deliver expertly in a medical setting. Right. But to create a baby and to have a baby, I mean, a lot of people are doing that. Nobody's winning the Masters. <laughs> It is a much more exclusive club. Maggie, and you're with me, right? This, if your husband had a five-shot lead, you so, would say, finish it out. Here's what I would say. As the, as the wife here, you don't just parachute in and say, if I was an athlete, then I would do this. That You've lived with this person who's been an athlete for years and years, presumably, yep. right? And if you're married and you're in a relationship, you've been with this athlete for a long time. So I think you would probably understand all the sacrifices they've made all the times they've had to put their sport ahead of everything, and I think you wouldn't be surprised if they said, you can't mm. be shocked. Like, wow, you've dedicated your whole life to this. We've dedicated our whole lives to this. You're in your athletic prime. We're doing this. But, like, how dare you now choose sports over me? I, wow. I, I think I, I would not be able to be shocked by that. That would be being willfully ignorant. I just think back to a, a wife and a mother who was in the hospital Everything looked bleak. We didn't even know she was going to pull through. And then she grabbed Rocky's hand and she demanded one thing. <laughs> she said, win, Rocky. Just win. <laughs> now that is like, that's where I come from. Like, it's all about the titles. Yeah. Adrian. Just win, Rocky. Just win, Scotty Scheffler. The baby will be here after you uh, yeah. hoist Listen, the cup. I, 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 we could have yeah. a. I still think it's there's wearing no the jacket, sorry. right <laughs> and wrong answer, but you could have a different conversation of it. The baby's born on Monday. Should he be teeing off on Thursday at Augusta? Like that, like that's a different thing. You no. just said like a couple of days later, like that's a different conversation. But Scotty Scheffler, in my mind, and if I was Scotty Scheffler, I'd leave wherever I was at any moment no. to go to the hospital. I appreciate you guys because I think there are a lot of people who say if you're the quarterback of a Super Bowl team and the delivery's on Sunday, you're going to play in the Super Bowl. That's I think what most yeah. athletes would do. And I and I and I think with all my heart that I would drive Patrick. If I was a chief, I would drive Patrick Mahomes to the airport to get him on his plane to go find Brittany when they're having a kid. And I'd go back to the game. We'd go, we got to win without Patrick, guys. And I would never hold it again. <laughs> Blaine Gabbard? That, that's, <laughs> does, does it depend on who your backup <laughs> like is? That, like the thing is, all, I, <laughs> that got real. The logic, <laughs> the logic is right up until mm. the very end. Like Pete and I, they, like there's nothing more significant than having a kid. So like I understand every other thing. You want to miss birthdays. You want to miss anniversaries. Yeah. You want to you want to miss funerals. Like all yeah. that. Okay, fine. Go play golf. Whatever. That this is the thing that that's this not is, like this, this is, is your non negotiable. Yeah, I would argue the moment of actually when you start developing a kid is also a must be there <laughs> situation. <laughs> well, right. I mean, so, but again, they'll be on the road what, for another 48 <laughs> weeks out of the year. <laughs> but 855 212 for CBS. Ramon is Indianapolis, is in Indianapolis. Hello, Ramon. How are you? <laughs> All right. All right. My favorite sports morning show. You guys got a good one going on here. Having uh, had three, didn't miss any, had to have a professional job and had to leave 
right there and then, and people had to take up the slack on one of my children being born, and folks had to take up the slack, but you don't miss that. Sure. It's a, it's a spiritual experience. You've got to understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, per, per, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Um, you got It's a spiritual experience. Yeah. And so the spiritual component, that seeing a life coming into the world, into your hands, there's nothing, not a Super Bowl, not an engineering paper, not a design of a building, sure. not nothing heart Trump surgery. Yeah. There's nothing when you watch that spiritual uh, experience of a life coming in. Matter of fact, it's an attachment so strong that it never leaves. Yeah, so Ramon, you I, do not sacrifice I get that. It. I don't care who it is. Ramon, mm. it's, a, it's a great point. However, and I, I understand that I think there are also, though, a lot of people, just we're t- removing the athletic part of it, I just want to mention this. There are a lot of people who are raising kids, and they were not there at the birth of their child, and they still, it is just still as special. So I do want to leave a oh, little right, right. room for that, for all the stepdads and the and stepmoms and the adoptive parents and the grandparents and people who may have not have been there for the birth. It still doesn't mean you don't have the attachment or to the you, child. I just want to make sure that we yeah, get that Yeah, or the, the birth could have happened really fast and you were stuck at work. I mean, real real life things happen, too. It doesn't. Uh, I totally appreciate what Ramon and everyone here is saying, but that being said, I'm I'm skipping it <laughs> ten times out of ten. I might even skip it for the Valspar Open. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> it's a pro am, really. I mean, do you realize how much money those golfers make? If it's two million dollars on the line, pro it's like in uh, what is it, K- K- Kapalua in uh, Hawaii? It's like that's a that's a trip to Hawaii. Okay, here I'll, I'll Kapalua. put it this way. I, I got I got you. I got both of you. I will offer to pay your future child's college education if you skip it. I'll give you a million dollars to skip it. Just to skip it? And by the way, we're talking about Scotty Scheffler, and I keep forgetting the other guy's name. Uh, Sam Burns. Sam Burns, thank you. Yeah, right. He's Two golfers. Scotty Scheffler's the much bigger. Scotty Scheffler's the biggest favorite since Tiger Woods and the (laughs) other guy. They Uh, both have kids who are due. (laughs) The other guy. The week of the Masters. Uh, What if I gave you a million dollars to skip it? In that sense, like you can use that million dollars to provide for your future kid. No. Oh, that's No money's easy. Yeah. No, that's true. It's like um, a decent proposal. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like... Not exactly it, the plot. But it's relevant proposal. because the <laughs> winner's... Did you see per- that movie? Well, let's yeah. go down that road. Like, let's say Jennifer Aniston's you... waiting for you in a hotel room. What, what do I do? I'm Would probably you sleep with go Robert Redford for, <laughs> for a million $3.2 million dollars Scotty Scheffler is not going to take home because of the... That's the master's purse. He already has $32 million. Uh, you know, taxes. <laughs> $16 million. Texas. Uh, let's get to some headlines, <laughs> Bogus. <Go on. laughs> You're saying because he lives in a non-income state tax, he can afford to Listen, skip the tournament? I've been hanging around with Boomer Esiason way too long to not know every tax shield in yeah. the lower 48 states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let Raymond Felton speak my feelings about Pete this morning. I'll say he's a d- bro. Uh, that being <laughs> nice. said. Oh, now Barzell over the Rangers stripe down the middle. East for Horvat. Shoots and he just whistled it wide right. Dobson holds it in down the right wing wall. Left corner, Matt Barzell. High slot, went through to Dobson. Right point, shoots. Deflection. They score! Casey Sezikis was in front of the net. I think he got the last touch. It's 2-0 Islanders. That's Chris King on Islanders Radio. For those of you who don't know, the Islanders are so popular, their radio broadcasts are heard across the entire campus, not just the student union at Hofstra University here on Long Island. The Fish Sticks did beat the Rangers last night 4-2 as they cling to a playoff spot while the Blue Shirts still have the best record of all of the professional hockey teams in North America oh, right lost. now. Yeah, that was a horrible way to present it. That sounded, what's, where's yeah. the lie? That was Fish a sports sticks. update just for Pete. Fish sticks, I was wrong. Uh, that's their alternate nickname. <laughs> Very they used to have jerseys about it. Isles. Are they not on a college radio station? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> that is 100% <laughs> yes, true. Is that why it always sounds so overmodulated? No, that's just no, the that's engineer. Another <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but you, wait, that. you also do uh, cover games that are on a college radio station, <laughs> Fordham basketball. Right. Fordham basketball. Is a college. First yeah. of all, no, yeah, actually, I know, you, I know you. It's I a know, college program. Yeah, I know you don't like me, <laughs> but for the fourth time, the games that I do are streaming on ESPN Plus and SNY. Yeah. There is a Fordham radio station of college kids broadcasting college basketball players. I know. We're not doing Ranger games on WFT. <laughs> the Islanders are on Hofstra radio because people outside of a six mile radius don't give a bleep about the Islanders. It's not true. Feels like I it. do.
We just I'm updated sure. America. On uh, them, so. All NBA newsmakers now reporting that Giannis's left Achilles is just fine after last night's injury scare. He does have a calf strain. We'll miss some games to recover from that. Giannis heard the third quarter of last night's 104-91 home win over the Celtics. Uh, somehow, as Maggie's already mentioned, this game included two free throws total, both of them by Milwaukee, making Boston the first team ever to have zero free throw attempts in an entire 48-minute <laughs> NBA basketball yeah. game. How long has the NBA been going on? That that stat struck me as crazy. Uh, it's been a complete reversal. It's not possible to do this. Yes. It is not possible to play a four-quarter <laughs> NBA game and not earn a free throw. Yeah. The Bucks committed four fouls. <laughs> you can't do that by playing any amount of defense. Well, the other it's part is possible. Dame Willard was like, yeah, I don't understand how there was not, like, the, the Celtics didn't get one free throw. But meanwhile, I fouled out, like, two games ago. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I haven't fouled out in God knows how long. And I fouled out, so there's it's not consistent. The NBA also has 16 ways that you get one free throw. You know, you get free. Th- you get a free throw for like defensive Technicals. three seconds. Yeah, right. te- this kind of tech. They got zero free throws. The, the playoffs are going to be a nightmare. You realize this. This is going to be a train wreck because the the officials yeah. already change a little bit from the regular season to playoffs, and now they have no idea what they're doing. Oh, uh, it's going to be foul city. The game did take a, an hour and fifty seven minutes. Though, it's like their nice. way of speeding up the game, right? Uh, Not with calling the pitch it. Clock. But Honestly, they're, they're, that Yankee game was two hours yesterday, yeah. two two days ago. Now yeah. we have basketball games that are under two hours. Nothing is worse than James Harden drawing a foul. That that <laughs> killed those the days NBA. are over. He yeah, might I know. Be out of the they, league. You know, they actually came out and said we're going to do this in January. They said we're no longer giving you that James Harden call, and it's better off for it. But last night they went too far. Uh, let's get to Jim Harbaugh right now. The new Chargers head coach, also an interior decorator, he has redesigned the Chargers locker room. The lockers now simply go in number order. I think some teams split up offense and defense and put players alongside other ones, but now you're just going one through 99. He has also added the players' high school recruiting stars to their nameplates at their lockers, I guess from motivation? All this stuff to me is so silly. It's so silly. And the mental gymnastics and these tricks that coaches uh, play, I get motivational tactics, This one to me is so dumb. It reminds me of, do you guys remember when the short-lived Giants head coach, Joe Judge, got the job and refused to say Daniel Jones's name and Saquon Barkley's name? He just wouldn't say their name, even though it was a starting quarterback and the starting running back for his team. And it was such eyewash. It's just so silly when you're talking about professional athletes. I don't care about numerical order. That's fine. But putting your high school recruiting, Jim realizes he's not a Michigan anymore, right? Like, it's the pros. Or not. Maybe he doesn't. Definitely doesn't. He, but he, I think he's going to approach it like a college program. But the same thing is, is holds true for a college program. You wouldn't do that to college kids either, right? I, to me, maybe college you get away with a little more mental, like these mind Jedi mind tricks and stuff. But for the pros, for to do this specific thing, I think is so silly. But at least in college, it's fresh. Like right. you're high, like it's like <laughs> right. oh, I just got a three star or two star. Nobody wanted me. Thank God I'm here. These are NFL players now. High school is two mm. levels removed from yeah. where they currently are. They don't care whether they were a one or a yeah, five star high school. Joey group. Bosa, this is going right. to motivate him. How? Well, yeah. Also, that's my thing. Was like, what? What, what about the five? Awesome? What about the five star <laughs> yeah. who's a who's a third stringer? Like, you want him to remind himself? Oh wow, I really didn't live up to my potential. Yeah, you well, I think good. that's the point, right? Yeah. Maybe I've, fire him up a little bit. I don't think that fires someone up. I think that makes them feel bad about themselves. Like, I, I don't know. I think that that would be the, that's the stupidest way. To, you think Johnny Manziel wants to be reminded every time, hey, you didn't live up to your expectations as a first-round pick? No. So, J- Johnny, though, was uh, was he even a four-star? No, I mean, I'm talking yeah. about, I'm talking, I just and went to the first-round pick. Well, anyway, I don't, I, but I got to be honest, I'm, I'm someone who, me, you tell me what, uh, you say a player, I want to know how many stars he is. I'm fascinated with it. And you got to admit, aren't you curious? Oh, I love it. I'm yeah, like Justin Herbert, I'm I just looked nuts. up three-star. Yeah, well, that's also, fascinating. But he was never going anywhere besides Oregon, so that really doesn't even matter. He's from Eugene. He was well, always going to Oregon, and so sure his, it matters. Why would you say it? Because his three star doesn't matter. Because he was, I think, if he had the if he had the opportunity, he could have been offered any place in America. He was going to Oregon. But I don't so think they do the stars based on that. I just think it's an interesting. It is interesting, at least. I understand what you're saying. Like puts undue pressure. But you know, we were talking earlier about Caleb Williams and adversity. I think Harbaugh is trying to prove a point that like. 
you know what? You can be a you can be the best player in the world as a three star, but you can be a five star. Don't take talent for granted. This is about work, 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 and nothing so, else but work. This is Harbaugh. He's putting the uh, on name plates now in the lockers of the Chargers. He's actually putting their high school like recruiting stars, like how many they got. Here's the other thing: we see this all the time with guys uh, when they play in prime time, and then they put their college right and it's like so and so from you know roll tide and blah, blah blah and the u and everything and some guys put their high school and some guys say they're uh whatever high school isn't always a positive memory for a lot of people college isn't always a positive memory for a lot of people i always thought it was weird to make people go back and try to even you know like if you don't want to be associated with the school that you went to because you think they did you wrong because you didn't have a great experience there why make this person relive it why can't they just be in the moment Really? Yes, really. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it's silly. Football players walk around high school like gods, and then they become super gods in college. Those guys had fine high school experiences. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. It was annoying to pick up the phone every day and have uh, coaches begging them to come to their college. Get out of here! They had fine high school experiences. It's the nerds like me who struggled in high school. <laughs> I think you guys who went to five different high schools who moved around all the time. I mean, I don't know. I just think I just think it's silly. Anyway, we can move on. Uh, new Mets DH, J.D. Martinez, fitting in very well. He just got a cortisone shot for lower back tightness, further delaying his Mets debut. Right. He only signed March 24th. He could have been activated as of this past Sunday. Now he is shut down for three to five days. Huh. And the legendary Tara Vanderveer retired from Stanford last night. She's the NCAA's all-time winningest basketball coach. Man or woman, 1,216 wins over 45 seasons with the Cardinal, Ohio State, and Idaho. Guys, back to you. Bogus, thanks so much. We see you guys on the phones. You want to weigh in on our great debate today, which is the greatest coaching rant of all time. You are welcome to weigh in there. And also, the moral dilemma. Is it moral? It's a moral dilemma, right? Scotty Scheffler's wife is oh. due. I don't know if it's moral. It's a conundrum. It's yeah, a family it does sound issue. Like, I would call it moral. It's not moral. It's a... Uh, it's just a what it a what would you do? Scotty Scheffler, yeah. the Masters teeing off tomorrow. His wife is due any moment. Would you leave the Masters to go be by your wife's side? Maggie Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two 
two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. things percolating here this oh, yeah. morning number one it is a wednesday which means we do the great debate around here uh today's question is the greatest coaching rant of all time we also have a uh personal question out there for you which is scotty scheffler who is the favorite and the biggest favorite before the masters tees off since tiger woods his wife is also due any day now so would you leave yeah. the masters to go be by your wife's side to have their first child I would not. I would also understand why my husband would not, but that is a very big line in the sand for a lot of people. You gotta be there. I love it. What? How are you? How are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> How's the feel? What's the weather like? What's the weather like? I think is a big one. Uh, Steve is in Orlando. Good morning, Steve. Hey, what's going on? Not much. What do you? What's your thoughts on if Scotty Scheffler has a decision to make if his wife goes into labor? I got to tell you, I love my wife and son more than anything. But Perloff, I'm with you, man. I got a five-stroke yeah. lead on yeah. Saturday going into Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I got to stay in Augusta and get that jacket. I will, I will go swaddle my new baby in that green jacket if I have to. <laughs> for it. Yeah. But I'm well, telling you. There's no tiger in the field coming after you, too. You, that five-shot lead is going to hold for Scotty. You know that. Especially someone like Sam Burns. Listen, Scotty won one, and he gets to go back for the mm. rest of his life, go to that Champions Dinner. You're Sam Burns. You get to cement yourself in legacy. Oh. You get to go back for the rest of your life, go to those dinners, go do all that. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, my son will forgive me. Oh, uh, Sam <laughs> Burns, I'm not even – Steve, I'm not even having the conversation for Sam Burns. If Sam Burns <laughs> is leading the Masters, no one's letting him leave. By the way, speaking of the Masters dinner, I mean, Scotty Scheffler with one of the all-time menus. We'll get to what they were eating last night at a – Augusta. Uh, John Rahm got to pick the menu. Carla is in Idaho, has a thought on this as well. Good morning, Carla. Good morning. How are you guys? We're doing great. What do you think? Uh, should Scotty Scheffler, would, should he leave the Masters if his wife goes into labor? So here's my first question. Does he even have a chance of winning the Masters? He's the biggest favorite since Tiger Woods. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe that's okay. But if it's someone, you know, who has less of a chance, Maybe they shouldn't, because mm. what story do you want your kid mm. to have down the line? Yeah. 
No, you got to you got to be on the same page on the story, Carla. See, <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. At least Carla will negotiate. Yeah. Bilotti is just and bogus, lying this in the sand. Non, this is a non-negotiable. Nope. Uh our big topic today besides the uh the Masters and Scotty Scheffler a potential decision he has to make is also our great debate. Again, the greatest coaching rants of all time. Uh just to recap, Perloff went with Denny Green. Yeah, crown them. I went with Mike Singletary. Can't win with him. EJ went with... Dan Hawkins. Go play in the murals, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bogish went with... What did Bogish He go? went with... Uh, Mike uh, Gundy. Mike, yeah, Mike, Mike Gundy. Gundy. I'm, I'm a man, man on 40. Yeah. How do I forget that? And uh, Bilotti went with the other famous Jim Mora. Not playoffs, but diddly-poo. It was a horse <laughs> performance in the second half. Horse <laughs> Uh, Sean's in Oregon. Sean, your greatest coaching rant belongs to who? It's got to belong to Tommy Lasorda. I love the rant and I love the passion, but nobody was more passionate about their team than Tommy Lasorda. And when he was questioned about Kurt Bavakwa's performance, you guys ever hear of that? It'll put a smile on your face. Well, we have a great day. Thank you, Sean. We have a little Tommy Lasorda for you. I have never, ever, since I've managed, ever told a pitcher to throw at anybody nor will I ever. And if I ever did, I certainly wouldn't make him throw at a 130 hitter like LeFay or a Bavacqua who could hit water if he fell out of a boat. And I guarantee you this, when I pitched, and I was going to pitch against a team that had guys on it like Bavacqua, I sent a limousine to get the to make sure he was in the lineup because I kicked that <laughs> any day in a week. He's a <laughs> big mouth, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Amazing. Tell us how you really feel, yeah. Tommy. I know, that did put a smile on my face. My favorite one was when Tommy chased the Philly fanatic and yeah. screamed, I'm not going to let that bleep, bleep, bleep green thing make fun of me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was serious with that one. I think, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, Get a limousine to drive him to the ballpark is an all-time great one. Couldn't hit water if he fell off a boat. Yeah, Tommy was, uh, you know, I we didn't do much baseball. Remember Hal McCray's rants? I'm curious if anyone will call in with them. Hal McCray, way, way, way darker than We this. have a Hal McCray rant. We don't have time for this, but maybe after the break. Okay. Oh, we do? Okay, great. I'd love to hear that. EJ's got us load us up here with uh, all these great coaching rants, so thank you. You are welcome to weigh in. Again, it's our great debate for today, the greatest coaching rant of all time. Uh, we have more to do, though. We have an interesting comment about what one – Hall of Fame coaches up to these days. So much to do here. It's Maggie and Perloff. Don't move. 855-212-4CBS. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining.
3 minutes 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He's been on the TB12 method since he was six. She's on her third scotch. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. It was always strange to me that Bill Belichick did not get hired in this cycle. Hey, welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. You had seven coaching openings, and Bill Belichick was not one of them. Got a little bit down the road on the Atlanta Falcons, but they end up going with Raheem Morris. So now, Perloff, Bill Belichick has been crisscrossing the country going to all these different programs. We saw him in Washington, all decked out in Huskies gear the other day, and then made a stop at Nebraska to hang out with Coach Matt Rule and some others. Yeah, it's it's interesting. He, he is sort of positioning himself as this NFL genius, historian, commenter guy. 
Like, dude, just go into TV, and why, why are you doing it this way? I don't really understand. Because he remember he did that top 100 players of all time on NFL Network, and he was really good on that. That seems to be the lane that he has chosen right now. Now, the question is, is, is that his choice? Would he rather be coaching? Well, I think he'd much rather be coaching, and I did believe the report that came out of New England that he would not have gone so quietly into the night and been so gracious to the Patriots if he knew he was going to get frozen out of the market, uh, the coaching market, this cycle. So... This is what Belichick's doing. He is going across the country, and he is sharing his genius, I think, with anyone who will listen. Here is Matt Rule, who just took over Nebraska, had Belichick in the building, and was astonished at how smart of a football mind he is. He is so smart. I've seen so much that he can make the complex so simple that it humbles you and embarrasses you. I was embarrassed yesterday listening to him, how smart he is, how simple it was. Embarrassed. I mean, do you think this is Matt Rule just blowing smoke for Bill Belichick, or do you think he really was learning all this? Because if I'm somebody, college, I don't know if he would do it in the pros, I'm calling in Belichick to try to get everything I possibly can from the guy. Yeah, I mean, listen, Matt Rule is a college coach. They lie by definition. I don't know if he was genuinely embarrassed, like, showing up at school without your underwear. I, I'm not sure, like, <laughs> what kind of embarrassment are we talking about? I think Matt Rule was performing a little bit there. Don't, don't Judy, you really think he was, God, this is embarrassing talking to Bill Belichick. No, but he, well, he knows no... about embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Look at yeah, I mean, yeah. He was a like Panthers coach. I know. Got a lot of money, but not a lot of wins. Um, I guess, like, he doesn't have to put him over, use a wrestling term, this much. I mean, he could always say Bill Belichick came in. We had a great conversation. He doesn't have to say, I was embarrassed because he knows so much more than I do. I mean, it's a pretty big declaration. And the more that Belichick keeps, if he keeps doing this again, he did Washington, Nebraska, who knows where he is today. He's going to get and continue to be in the news. And I think for people who believe that Bill Belichick will never get another opportunity at the NFL level, you are dead wrong. Now, I was dead wrong. I thought he would get a job this cycle. I was not the only one. I don't think we've seen the last of him. I think he's coaching again. I think he's breaking down Shula's record. I think all that stuff is still out there for Belichick, even at, what, 72? Yeah, but, uh, I mean, do you want him if you're a team? Uh, I think that's an interesting question here, too. Like, is is he an attractive hire? He wasn't this. For whatever reason, he was not an attractive hire, this coach cycle. They're coming off a 4-13 and season, and they look poorly coached in New England. It. Yeah. So I think I... I understand that he's this genius, but why was it working in New England then? What changes? I think a lot of things. I think you're at a place for 20 years. I think that you got a lot of baggage. You know, I think ownership wanted to move on. I think they were tired of Belichick just being the, you know, um, the key, the keys to the kingdom. I think there's a lot at play in New England, including ego. And yes, it didn't look good at the last year and they had trouble because they missed on Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi couldn't be the guy and, you know, maybe being a little too... Um, you know, pig, strong-headed on coaching hires and things like that. But to think that Belichick doesn't have this knowledge, just a reminder of just how smart of a football coach. So here's a little bit more from Matt Rule, that Belichick was so on fire that he spoke for three and a half hours, no breaks. He came in and met with our coaching staff. And um, well, three and a half hours in, I was like, Coach, would you like? water <laughs> a coffee would you like to use the restroom because I desperately had to use the restroom you know and he's like I'm fine Matt I was like yes sir yeah. <laughs> what a chump uh, what who uh, rule uh, he's just, he's yes just, sir he's in your building he's just talking to your staff you nice still have respect for somebody give me a break I'm sorry you would not respect Belichick if he I, walked no, into your pro yes sir you're coming into my building. I run my program. Right, right. I'm a head coach just like you're a head coach. Sure. You're saying, yes, sir. Okay, do you need some oh, Come on. This was a much. I'm okay. sorry. This was much. Here's the thing. You're hosting a show on WFAN, and Mike Francesa walks in. Yeah. You guys both have the same job. Yeah. You would not say, you would not. Yes, sir. You wouldn't, yes, sir, Mike Francesa? You, I would. <laughs> yes, sir, well, on Let's, say, let's on not the use air. Mike Francesa. Let's say we walk in here. You know, uh, Say, uh, Jim Rome walks in. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame. He's somebody where you want to be. To show him a little respect is not the, that's not showing cow weakness on our part. That's showing respect to somebody who's a, a icon. Right, but this is, I think, that's, I, also, I, think that's a, I think that's a little different. But he's also, Belichick's technically sort of retired. 
So I think it's not an active coach. It's not a potential competitor right now. And I don't think Belichick's ever coming into college. So it's different because he's not somebody he's going to coach against. I think he's showing reverence to an older coach. Well, why can't Matt Rue go back to the NFL? Uh, yeah, I just, I don't think that's happening. Spectacularly. <laughs> I, it's funny. I feel like he seems better suited to college. But that's not where he is right now. That's not where he is right now. And he failed in the NFL. <laughs> There's actually, we could go on, we could spend three and a half hours explaining why Matt Rule's not going back to the NFL. <laughs> no, I get it. He's a program builder in college. Yeah. And honestly, like that kind of, what, what he just did there, that's a college thing. He's all about sort of relationships. I mean, to me, if I was a Nebraska fan and I heard my head coach was so embarrassed to be around a guy who won three games last year who no NFL team wanted him, and he's yes sirring him. That's, like I, oh, I, I would feel, no. I would feel a way. I would. Well, it's Bill Belichick. To, I don't, he was terrible. To say that you were embarrassed because Belichick knows so much more than you do. That I thought was a little bit much. Yes. To call him sir when he's in your building, that is not. That is not being. Uh, you know, uh, some kind of. Uh, you know. Uh, wuss or yeah, something. Yeah. That's not that's not that's not seeding your program to Belichick. That's just being respectful for somebody who's done it, who's done it at a very high level and who has won so much. I think you're being personal, that's fine. You want to say yes or I'm someone who's usually over the top when it comes to praise for other people and whatever, that's fine. This is Matt Rule. This is a guy who's making what three, four, five million dollars a year. This is a guy who's one of the supposed to be one of the best college football coaches in the land. He was great at Baylor. He coached in the NFL and someone comes into your building and you're supposed to be the guy that knows all about football. Everybody's leading you. And then they see you saying that I'm embarrassed by another coach who can't yeah. get an NFL job. Well, I mean. Oh, but that is like, so unfair even, to Bill even Belichick. If, yeah, even if Belichick. It's true. Has, I know, but even, <laughs> even if he didn't get a job, how many Super Bowl rings does he have? Six. Okay. And, okay. What is, and what does Matt Rule have? But they're both Jack squad. But they're both currently coaches. Right. Okay, that's fine. So, so Bell Belichick currently wants to coach. No, he's not. Well, he's not currently well, a coach. No, that's an saying, important he's, distinction. He's not. He's not retired. I'm saying he's. They, 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 he's not. He's not. He wants to. He wanted to coach. He wants to keep what is not retired about Bill Belichick right now? But go well, ahead. Well, we'll see. But so this is Bill Belichick. He's kind of going around the country now. He's in Washington. He was in Nebraska. Matt Rule said that he knew so much and was ex- able to explain it in such an easy way that it was embarrassing. Called him sir. Um, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because you can s- have the same job title as somebody. You could both be called coach. It doesn't mean you're in the same exact spot. And Belichick, for the 40 years that he's done it, for the six rings, he and Matt Rule are technically yeah. both coaches at a high level. They're both high-level football coaches, but you, there's tiers to this thing. But I think, and I've been football locker rooms playing high school, and I know it's different, but it's college, so it's not that far above. When you talk about yes, sir, or no, sir, usually it's player to coach. And I played for a team where the coaches were sir, the players were players. Right. So when you're talking about two equals and you're talking about you're talking about young men you're dealing with, and you're saying that the head coach of the team yeah. and the other coaches who are all supposed to be the sirs have some other oh. higher person above them. Only only you are putting Matt Rule and Bill Belichick on the same level. No one else is doing that. They might yeah. again, they might both be called coach. But they're not the same. But I think I think Rule was trying to do a favor for Bill Belichick with this over the top praise. It was really over the top. Yeah, I think I think you know obviously they're probably friends, and he's like, I really want Bill Belichick to be in a good light, so somebody hires him. I think he was doing him a favor, and I think it's going to work. Maybe not Matt Rule and his commentary, but I think Bell. And to get back to the point, I think Belichick is going to get back into the NFL. Pete, you were saying. Yeah, well, uh, I wouldn't have brought him in my building because he's not retired. And who's to say that a, that a rich donor doesn't come out and say, "Hey, <laughs> he's a vulture." Hey, look, hey, look. Bill Belichick was in our building. We're gonna give you the the world to wow. come coach Nebraska. It's undermining <laughs> me, really. You, you exactly. Really, do you really think that Bill Belichick would take the Nebraska yeah. job? He or loves would, coaching. Yeah, he does love coaching. He loves coaching, and he loves oh. he, lo- he loves like mentoring. Can you imagine him way. going into a living room, Bill Belichick? <laughs> well, what are you talking put about? The rings out on you, the table. Some donor gets a hold of that. Oh, he was in our building. Why? Why isn't he our coach? Well, maybe uh, that's a point in know. Matt Rule's favor because you're saying that Matt Rule being so deferential to Belichick shows a, a weakness. Maybe he's so comfortable in his own ability and his right. spot, he doesn't mind bringing a fox into the hen house. He it, doesn't care. Yeah. Matt Rule won, what, five games last year? I, I, if I'm a rich donor, I don't want to hear that you're embarrassed by the knowledge of another coach. And I'll be honest, I don't I don't care if it's Bill Belichick at this point in his career. Bill Belichick, who's winning three Super Bowls in four years and was racking them up with the Patriots, comes in in his prime, and you want to say that? That's a totally different thing. Mm. He's Bill not Belichick sir today, now? Bill Belichick today... <laughs> 
coming in and saying, and then we're going, we're going on he's the like whole. A, he's like emeritus. We're now. going on the whole sir thing, but I think the sir thing it combines with the first cut. It's not yeah. necessarily just saying sir. I think it speaks to a level for Matt Rule of for him me, saying he was embarrassed that where, where Belichick I, I think knew think so that much he, more. Very clearly, if Bill Belichick at this point in his life still is so much, so much way above your intellect when it comes to football, I would be concerned as a college fan or a booster at Nebraska. I would. But I, Belichick last year, he didn't like he was outfoxing anybody in the NFL last year. We all watched him coach. And I, I'm surprised that we're sitting here acting like Bill Belichick last year showed to be some savant. That so wasn't what we we're saw We're talking last about year. a body of work. EJ, when a coach, a college coach, uh, says nice things about a weaker opponent, like Lou Holtz saying Morgan State looks like a tough opponent coming. Like, do you take that seriously? College coaches say all sorts of crap. It doesn't mean anything. They always go over the top with a million different ways. Why are you taking this so seriously? This is also goes back to Perloff's premise on everything, which is everything is a lie. They come Every, a, co- well, a college coach is just 110% <laughs> lies. Like, Matt Rule doesn't mean anything. And Nebraska got bigger problems. By the way, he just missed winning. I thought Matt Rule did ever a Super Bowl ring. He just missed. He got to the Giants in 2012. Uh, so it's not like he is. He, he almost did win a ring. That would have been good. Then what I could was have his ser- job title when he got to the Giants? I think Giants? He, was quality, he was quality control coach with the Giants. But he, that's one of the reasons he got the Panthers job because he was part of the Giants family too. Like he had a lot of pro connections. Uh, but he's never going back to the NFL. And honestly, this is your problem in Nebraska. You haven't won in 20 years. This is <laughs> This is not your problem. Coming up, uh, you're welcome to weigh in on this, by the way, 855-212-4227. Coming up, this is an exciting day around here. This is the culmination of what has been a month-long March Madness frenzy. Our own bracket of Maggie and Perloff, one-hit wonders. We finally crown a champion today. I'm getting goosebumps here, guys. I think I'm more excited than Danny Hurley was on Monday night. In fact, I know I am. 855-212-4CBS. The results of the Maggie and Perloff one-hit wonder bracket next. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two 
two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Back on Maggie and Perloff. So every year during March Madness, we do our own bracket that is not college basketball. What, what are the three that we've done so far? Bracket of Stuff, which was awesome. Yep. Th- was it Things We Hate? Things That Suck. <laughs> things That Suck. Yeah, Getting Hacked won. <laughs> yeah, oh, that definitely deserved to win. This year was One Hit Wonders. I don't know why we did One Hit Wonders, but they have invaded my brain over the <laughs> last month. And I think, I think it's fitting. The final matchup was yesterday... And uh, can I say it was Take On Me by AHA. Of course, a famous video with sort of cartoon characters going against Tommy Two Tones, 8675309. Jenny, I got your number. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, should we have a drum roll here, Maggie? Do you want to announce the winner? No, I think you should do it. You have the honors. Actually, I'm not going to announce it. I think I need to sing it. Take on me. What a ride. And just like UConn wins the tournament as a number one seed and South Carolina, this was a number one seed in the Maggie and Perloff March yep. Madness bracket and of one hit wonders. And it also went up against a 10 seed, which really was like the darling of the tournament, yep. the Cinderella for sure with eight, six, seven, five, three Oh nine. I mean, just a magical ride for Tommy two tone. So this was mirrored kind of yeah. like that. Eight six seven five three or nine was kind of like the NC State. <laughs> and Tommy Two Tone was kind of like the DJ Burns. This whole thing really captured the imagination. But ultimately, take on me, the one seed prevails. Congratulations! I always do this song because you know Aha is from Norway, and my grandmother was born in Norway. I'm of Norwegian descent, yeah. hence the uh, sort of whiter shade of pale skin that I have. <laughs> uh, and I, if you were, if you grew up in the '80s, you knew this video. It was required. You know the the. Actually, I thought it was all about the 80s. I thought Video Killed the Radio, radio Star might take the whole tournament because 
some reason, between 81 and 85, nobody had a second hit, Maggie. Yeah. There was nothing the but one hit. One. <laughs> what? Cocaine. <laughs> I think it really... No, I mean, I've been it, looking for a reason. That's a great one. But e- Either you put out 10 albums or you put out one song. <laughs> but why? We don't... <laughs> where, where are the one-hit wonders of our youth? Now it feels like every song is by... Beyonce and Drake. Where's the Tommy Two Tone and the Semi Sonic <laughs> and the Sir well, Mix a Lot? You know, uh, we had a couple mo- more modern ones. We had Mo Bamba was on the list. We yeah. had a few. Um, I was really pleased with how uh, you know some of the some songs did in this tournament. I liked the fact that Baby Got Back was in our lives for the last four yeah. weeks. I love the fact that we got to dip back into these songs. And quite frankly, I don't really listen to a lot yeah. like Jump by Criss Cross well, and ha- Jump Around by House of Pain. I I hated that Who Let the Dogs Out was stuck in my head for a week. I that that it was went out good. early, too. So that was really a you Who problem. Let the Dogs Out went out early? I mean... I thought so, right? Or the Macarena went out really the Macar- early. Yeah, but it went up against Tainted Love, which was a powerhouse, too. That's true. Uh, the 80s it brought back a lot of 80s. So I think it was fitting that we had an 80s uh, champion. Block. The thing yeah. is, we don't really, do we have, um, I'm sorry to get deeper here, we don't really have pop music like you used to have. You don't have the FM stations that play. Everybody's got their own kind of music now because you have Spotify, you have Apple Music, and it's all spread out. It was, when I was growing up, you had two stations and you had to listen to one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day. I, I'm totally back in my day in yeah. here. And now, so I, I, I think that we should learn from this and put out more one hit wonders. Although I have to tell you, I think Lil Nas X will eventually be in these. I think Old Town Road. I know he's had his other songs, but that feels a little one hitty wonder to me. I could see that. So there we go. Congratulations again. Take on me wins the entire thing. The whole they are cutting down the nets. They win the Maggie and Pearl off March Madness bracket. What are we doing next year? Let's, what are we doing next year? I thought uh, we could I do. Made my, I made my case. Yeah, what EJ has already made a case for greatest sitcoms of all time. Oh. 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, right? Oh, can we even wait till next March? That is exciting <laughs> stuff right there. I thought we could really get people mad at us if instead of doing one-hit wonders next year we did greatest songs of all time, but that would be... It's very subjective. Yeah, it, it seems a little too subjective. Greatest sitcoms also very subjective. I thought you were going mad about you there. Time. Greatest singers? Maybe another one. Yeah. So there you go. That Maggie Pearl bracket of one hit wonders again. Congratulations. Take on me takes home the title, and hopefully we have a better trophy for them than whatever the NCAA gives out. And Peter Schwartz gives you a handshake. <laughs> Why is that trophy so boring? It's like when a you plaque. say, uh, when you say, are we going to go find Aha and tell them about this? I mean, they probably aren't doing anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe huh. we could get them do a. When's the last time Aha thing? toured? Are they still alive? Is a the, the song came out in '84. Have they ever toured? <laughs> EJ, can you reach out to have them on the show tomorrow? <laughs> EJ, you can get I, a hold get, of Aha, I'll get, right? I'll get on that. All right. You'll get right on top so of that. So speed dial on the fire. Give him a call. <laughs> so we also have our great debate today, which is the greatest coaching rants of all time. And I do want to get to some be, that we have not um, heard from yet. Now, the five of us came up with our great coaching rants. Uh, Perloff went with Denny Green. I went with Mike Singletary. EJ went with Dan Hawkins. Uh, Bogish went with Mike Gundy, and Bilotti went with Jim Mora, but the diddly-poo rant, not the playoffs rant. So a couple others that people have been submitting to the show, uh, youtube.com slash CBS Sports Radio, twitch.tv slash CBS Sports Radio. How about the Herm Edwards, very famous, why do we even play the game? You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. (laughs) When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. I love the person is it sounds like they're feverishly typing like I know I've got gold here. <laughs> it's nine, it's 2002. I've got to type 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 this thing up. Yeah, it's it's one of those two you remember when Trent Dilfer said you can't win by losing or something like that. It's just so obvious. Obviously you play to win the games. But sometimes a coach has to really lay it out there for Yeah, you. yeah, it's one of those <laughs> so blatantly obvious statements it kind of makes sense, kind of doesn't make sense. Uh, you've heard that one. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard you play to win the games. He comes on to ESPN, and the Sports Center host always goes, Herm, we know why you play the games. That's been going on for 20 years. <laughs> uh, here was another one. Mike Ditka 
Now, Dick has a couple. This one is when he was with the Saints, uh, and they were two and seven, and he was in a bad mood because they were so bad. Doesn't matter which one run. There'll be a quarterback that'll be named next week that'll be the starter. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Injuries from the uh, game. Talk to the trainer. Next. <laughs> Mike, why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? <laughs> okay. If you were two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. <laughs> That's so good. Next. Oh, my God. What do you care? Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I'll give you one more before we get to our update. How about this is Bill Callahan. When he was the head coach of the Raiders, thought they were not a very smart football team. We've got to be the dumbest team in America <laughs> in terms of playing the game. And I'm highly critical because of the way we give games away. We give them away. Period. And uh, it's embarrassing. And I represent that. And uh, I apologize for that. But that's the best we can do. Uh, that's a sad product. I love how he says, we must be the dumbest team in America in terms of playing the game. It's like, no, we thought you meant SAT scores. <laughs> we knew <laughs> you were talking about football there, Coach. Bocce ball. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, what were their region scores? <laughs> yeah, right. We must be the dumbest at trivia night at the bar on Monday. You know, we've never asked Amy Trask about that, our pal Amy. I'm sure she was either in the room or mm -hmm. close I, to being oh, yeah. in the room. I saw Bill Callahan. I was looking up the stuff to get these cuts. I saw he said just last year that he thought that that rant is why he never got another head coaching job. This is a guy that did coach a team to a Super Bowl. Mm. Right. And he, and never, and he never changed they, any of the play calls. He never changed the play calls. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly right. was happening. Right. But, I mean, it's, it is kind of, I mean, their worst coaches are guys who have accomplished less that definitely got second chances. He's got none. And he's regarded as one of the best offensive line coaches in, in football. So now, now he's going to be with his son, right, in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, really great. Really, really good stuff today. Greatest coaching rants of all time. We've got more for you after Bogish gives us headlines from this morning. Hello. Did anyone mention the Bucks coach when they were winless? Asked about your team's execution. Oh, yeah. He said, I'm in favor of it. John Robinson, right? Yeah. And yeah. then Brian <laughs> Kelly tried to also, he tried to do that on the fly, and it came out really bad. Does anybody know the Lee Ely rant? We used to play a DP show yes. all the time. With the phone, right? Uh, I it? don't know I did it, but there's, I we can't do it. There's so many curse words in it. It's more curse words than non-curse words. <laughs> it was from 1984. He was the Cubs manager. I know right. he's... I used to be a Phillies manager. This one, you can't do it. Like, there's no way to edit this one. Not to challenge you guys, but there's <laughs> at least... Not accepted. Yeah. It's 50 words. There's 27 <laughs> F-bombs in it. It's crazy. Yeah, I think it was... Actually, I think it might have been Hal McRae when he was the Royals manager. That oh, we did that one. the phone on the... Desk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Do we have Hal McRae? We do have it. All right, let's hear it. No, no. Don't ask me all these stupid-ass questions. No. And in, in, in the... Uh, God, all these... Oh, geez. My favorite part about that is you see a guy walking out of the locker room bleeding on the face. Oh, my god! Some reporter. It hurt someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some reporter got hit when he was throwing the all the recorder. equipment. Yeah. Was it a tape recorder or a phone? He threw multiple things. Right, there right. was a tape recorder there. I don't know if it was a tape recorder or a phone, but there's a guy who's just walking out. As you hear the cursing as the door's closing. A guy walks out just smiling as blood is going down his face. You're like, wow, wow. what happened in there? And you know what? Baseball's changed so much. You can't even slide into second these days. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jeff McNeil. Let alone, you know, a, a manager with an all-time rim. You can't even slide into second. Back in the day, managers after the game would take off their pants, go in their office, pull out a bottle of wild turkey, and start drinking and talking to people. That that was way cooler than what we have now. Can I be honest? When I first started covering sports, and I my one of my first jobs was a stringer for the Associated Press covering the first season of the Nationals, and I used to go in the opposing clubhouse. Yeah. And I remember interviewing multiple guys who were drinking beer after the game. Oh, yeah. They, you really don't do that stuff anymore, at, at least not in full sight. 
Um, but that was like oh they would God. be open, like guys would just be drinking right smoking there. Smoking too. That right? was two thousand five. Yeah. I'm I i do not feel like I'm that old. I mean, Dave Parker would smoke in can you imagine somebody smoking in a clubhouse now? I mean well, Jim Leland did. At least it. he hid that he didn't do it in the <laughs> And it, honestly, we, that stood out. It was quite wild. Baseball has changed. It is definitely lamer now. Jim Leland probably smoked in the dugout. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, yeah. everybody did back in the day. Yeah. Isn't there a baseball card where Dick Allen actually has a cigarette in his mouth? <laughs> I think there is. And yeah. I think it's. I think it's like a collector's item now. Yeah. 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 That is like that was the, the peak physical like condition you could be in is just be a baseball player who smokes. <laughs> that was the best we had. Although I remember doing a show with Bart Scott, he told me that there were very, very, very few, but there were players on the Jets yeah. who smoked. There's a famous so Len Dawson, <laughs> the famous Chiefs quarterback Len Dawson, smoking a cigarette at halftime of the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, it's the sixties. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like being smoking and being an athlete. I mean, you. I mean, listen. You don't think Joker's ever lit up a cigarette ever? I what is he say, care? Vlad Divac was definitely. <laughs> yeah, Divac was a big smoker. <laughs> I feel like Jokic puts like six in his mouth, yeah. lights them all, starts handing them out to Do people. they have a secret room in the Nuggets where he can go watch off-track betting and smoke cigarettes? <laughs> Although he looks like he's in great shape now. All right, here all come right. your headlines. At the moment, neither Kentucky nor Arkansas has a men's basketball coach. John Calipari officially resigning in Lexington yesterday, has yet to officially take the Razorbacks job. Bulls head coach Billy Donovan has a long history with those Wildcats, so his name is keeps coming up. I have not been contacted by any. I haven't spoken to anybody. My total commitment and focus is here to this team and to this group. He said that yesterday his team then went out, had two guys fight over a dunk and miss it and <laughs> lose it home to the Knicks 128-117. New York is alone in third in the East this morning because the Magic lost in Houston 118-106. The Knicks one game behind the Bucks, who beat the Celtics 104-91 after Giannis left in the third where they left calf injury, it's reportedly just a strain, no Achilles damage. He will have to miss some time to heal. The sixer win streak is six. After taking care of the Pistons, 120-102. Philly keeps Miami a half game back of the seven spot. The Heat surviving double OT in Atlanta, 117-111. Out west, the Clippers clinched the Pacific Division, 105-92 in Phoenix. The Mavs clinched a top six spot with a 130-104 W in Charlotte. And the Warriors posted a 134-120 win at the Lakers. They're now a half game behind L.A. for ninth. Anthony Davis did not play last night thanks to a headache and nausea. The winningest coach in NCAA basketball history retired last night. 1,216 wins over 45 years at Stanford, Ohio State, and Idaho for Tara Vanderveer. She won three national titles, made 11 other Final Fours with the Cardinal. Longtime assistant Kate Pei is expected to replace her. The better Josh Allen just got paid in Jacksonville. Five years, $88 million guaranteed for the Jaguar linebacker. He got the franchise tag to start this offseason. Allen's a two-time Pro Bowler, just recorded a franchise record 17 and a half sacks. Uh, It was Jim last hour. Now it's John Harbaugh, the Ravens head coach. Very thankful the league has outlawed the hip drop tackle. He's a victim, don't forget. His Ravens lost tight end Mark Andrews for a good chunk of last season because of one of these plays. Harbaugh said defenders will be just fine without the tackle because they were fine for the 100 years before it became popular recently. Good point. Math is right on. I know this is weighing on you guys, but the White Sox have finally won again. The 2-2 pitch. Fletcher drills one out into right center, and it's going to get all the way to the barrier. Lee will come around to score. Here comes Ben Benintendi. The throw will go to third base, and Fletcher's going to be tagged out. He tried to stretch it into a triple. Silly. Dominic Fletcher, just a tie-breaking two-run double, top eight on White Sox Radio Chicago, a 7-5 win in Cleveland, ending their five-game skid. Seven runs yesterday. They had 16 total in the 10 games before that one. The Yankees, yay, an MLB best 10-2 and two after holding off the Marlins 3-2. The Blue Jays have their first back-to-back wins of the young season, 5-3 over the Mariners. U.S. women's soccer won the She Believes Cup over Canada last night in PKs. They also beat Canada in a shootout in the Gold Cup semifinals a month ago. And the Toronto Maple Leafs, 5-2 winners in New Jersey last night. Austin Matthews scoring goal number 66, the most anyone's mm. had in the league since Alexander Ovechkin had 65 back in 07 08. And gearing up for that playoff collapse. Yeah. Hey, Islander fan, enough. <laughs> we get it. Where's the score? 
<laughs> Sorry, I was distracted by that entire thing because we've got a couple TVs on here in the studio and they show various things. And we have one of the local news stations up and apparently the Chippendales are coming up next. <laughs> They're still That's a thing. thing? Rescue Rangers? No, the other ones. Oh. Did you leave early for the wrong day? You should have left early today. And gotten <laughs> I know. Guys, show. I've uh, got to think. I've got to run to the local Fox affiliate and go wait outside the glass and start licking it. I know. I just... <laughs> I haven't seen a Chippendale show in... <laughs> ever? <laughs> Actually, ever. I've, I've never I can't seen remember. it either. I, it just... Obviously, everyone remembers the uh, famous Chris SNL Farley. skit. Everyone Chris knows Farley. Chris Farley and, and Patrick Chippendale. Swayze. That's the only one I've ever seen. Is that a good job? I feel like it would be tough. you got to be in really good shape. So many sit-ups. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're going to have women kind of fawning all over you, but is it the right, you know... It's like your you're volume shooter at that Is point. that a good job? As compared to what, like... I don't know, attorney general or something like <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about? Here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when the Chippendales turn down the <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> men's basketball. Uh, yeah. But I do always <laughs> like, ah, I just don't love the hours. At all of those like unique shows, I always wonder what the people set out to be that they ended oh, up doing this. That's a sad way to look at strippers. Right? <laughs> like, um, would you hope to, like, you know, if you're dancing on a cruise ship in a Disney show, like, right. what were you hoping to I, be at 12? I will guess. I will guess one occupation. Lawyer. <laughs> you think they all want to be lawyers? No, to, no. to take the bar exam to pay for the pay for law school. No, oh, no it's always no, no, it's, no, no. it's always veterinary school. You know, <laughs> yeah, sure. what, what somebody, sure it's always <laughs> veterinary school. Wait, Maggie. I can tell you, I know somebody who dances on a cruise ship. Okay, and uh, like strips. And, no, no, no. She's oh. like a in in like a it's like a Broadway type type okay. of show, and she's a dancer in it in part of the company. She wants to be an actress. She still does. And okay. so she's had like a couple bit parts and things, and this sort of pays the bills while she's hoping for her big break. Yeah. Uh, have you ever gone to a male review? I have not. Never. Like, been. Never on a bachelor one. party or no. anything. <laughs> no. What do you review with the male review? <laughs> male review. <laughs> Lots of things. Men wearing leather pants and no shirts. <laughs> yeah. Pants, thank you. Isn't uh, there something called like Thunder from Down Under in, in Vegas? Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Does that still exist? Uh, I don't know, but again, is looking this... at Pete as if he would know. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funnier if they came in with a briefcase like this is my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, there they are, Maggie. I know. I'm like, well, why are chains they... involved now? Uh huh. I... And a guitar. <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> Who, them or the women? <laughs> For the ladies. <laughs> Lucky us. What if, uh, have you ever been at a bachelorette party where a cop showed up, but it wasn't really a cop? Turned no, out to be a male stripper? Because <laughs> that always no, happens I've in been sitcoms. To, I've been to one where an actual cop showed up. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh no, we better keep uh -oh. it down. Was anyone like, take it off? <laughs> the, the pizza delivery guy? No, nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> Heard your pipes are clogged. <laughs> God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, no, and I will not flip that question on the rest of you guys. If, oh, assuming your geez. significant others are listening. 855 cbs <laughs> Nothing to hide. I've seen things that I will not soon forget at bachelor parties. That you can't unsee. That I did not participate in, for the record. Yeah. Bogus is Handcuffs. just getting quiet here. I've got one good story, but and my wife already heard it. So it doesn't matter. But we had a. You want to share with the it class? yours? Was it yours? No, it was not. Mine, oh, okay. was, mine was tame. It was my buddies. We went to Atlantic City, not in the summer. So off season Atlantic City in New Jersey <laughs> nice. is not a place to go. <laughs> and this <laughs> this young woman was uh, started her performance in like a kimono, and she couldn't get it off. <laughs> like she literally, she literally couldn't unbutton it. And then you know when they then they. So that was sad. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, when they then walk the floor after they're on the stage, yeah. and she came over to us and she eventually asked us if we could give her a ride back to New York. No. Oh, <laughs> not good. And you not, did, I assume. We did not. Because okay. soon we wake up like in, in a tub without our kidneys or something. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Wait, so we. It's like we, funny. She's actually in her second year of law school, according to Pete. Right. So we had an That's ethical question earlier in the show. Is, is it. Okay for Scotty Scheffler to play out the Masters if his wife is in labor. Right. Is it? I assume that you you wouldn't care if your husband cheated on you during his bachelor party because that's allowed, right? Oh yeah. I thought the ethical <laughs> dilemma was going to be: is it okay to give the stripper a ride to right. the right. next oh, major God. metropolis? Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, was <laughs> is one step away from <laughs> yeah. bachelor party. Like women don't care, right? Honestly, if you if you give a, the the stripper from the bachelor party a ride to the next city, yeah, yeah, you may as well have cheated that's on your worse wife than cheating. because yeah. it's not. By the way. When she said, give me a ride to New York, who knows what was in her, what what plots were going on there. Yeah, no, she, re she really needed a I ride. I think judging by the performance, she needed as much help as possible. <laughs> She's in the wrong line of work. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> she she would be rescuing. Yeah, if you're a stripper, you can't get your clothes off. It's a real, it's a real hazard. Anyway, and once again, here's Bampy. <laughs> this time, take she's, two. Thirty <laughs> minutes of take it off, please. Are you finally going to? Come on, keep it on. Keep Come on. on, it's been twenty minutes. Take it off already. <laughs> it's like she's in a hoodie. Do we need scissors? <laughs> I mean, the, the Why she dress as an astronaut? Now. This is going to take forever. How do you get stuck in a kimono? What is a kimono? Is not that a robe? <laughs> it was some kind of kimono. Might be the right, not, might, might not be the right word, but it was some kind of Asian garment. And like, she literally came to a dead stop and like looked down and couldn't like, figure can, out. Can someone turn a, the lights up a little bit? Because I can't see how to get those buttons out. It was one of out. the saddest things <laughs> that I've seen in person. And another time I thought, what would, what did she want to do that yeah. led her to this Wednesday night in Atlantic City in October where she can't disrobe for $5? Yeah, not, you had a bachelor not selling party, retail. You had a bachelor party on a Wednesday well, night? I mean, not a Wednesday, but <laughs> if it was October in Atlantic City, it was not the 18th. Might have been a Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> that is off peak. <laughs> save money on that flagship hotel. <laughs> Sounds like you save money on the stripper, and that was a mistake, too. You need a pro. 855-212-4CBS. Seven Thank people you. in a room. You can't say you need a pro. <laughs> that's a, Someone who can get the... No, anyway, no, that's not on. what that means All in that right, context. Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing someone played a trick on her and tied up her outfit. No, I... Yeah, that I sounds mean, like... You know, those that's strippers what always pulling pranks. Right. <laughs> They're loose back there. Silly Trixie did it again. How'd she get it on if this... Prank, it's a robe with a sash around it, so I, I don't how does this she, trick work? Yeah, I don't think she was uh, free of... Chemical influences. Oh, oh. okay. Got it. Yeah, oh, it's like an even sadder now that that yes. just makes me sad. It where's was, where's it, the professionalism in Atlantic City <laughs> these days? <laughs> where's that, the that, clear that? headed? Uh, Should have given her a ride. <laughs> five, five, At least two, bus fare. <laughs> two one two four or, two two or, seven. Or cab to the bus. <laughs> oh man. Bicycle, anything. Can you imagine anything sadder than a Wednesday night, a, a bus station in Atlantic City on a Wednesday in October? <sighs> Tough times. <Anyway. laughs> I, I grew up right near Atlantic City. Trust me, I, I w- I've been there. I will be going to cheer myself up now to the Chippendale show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I put a smile on my face. I wonder what the 10, 15 a.m. show is like. <laughs> the, the brunch the special. The breakfast special. How much for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Steak and eggs and abs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, more of your nominations for our great debate, which is the greatest coaching rant of all time. I don't think Take It Off was in any of those rants, but pretty close. We get to that next. It's Maggie Perla. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. (laughs) 
two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Gosh, we got a lot done today. Proud of us. Named a champion for our Maggie and Perloff one-hit wonder bracket. Take on me is the big winner. Did our great debate today of the greatest coaching rants of all time. Yeah, I was about to sing a little more take on me. And then, yeah, I don't think anyone wants that. <laughs> I'm going to pivot away from that. I couldn't hit those high notes. I a forgot uh, how good aha was. <laughs> a couple more of our coaching rants here that we want to play for you again. Great debate today was the greatest coaching rants of all time. Perloff went with Denny Green. I went with Mike Singletary. Dan Hawkins was EJ's pick. Uh, Bogish went with Mike Gundy. And Pete went with Jim Mora, but not the playoffs rant, the diddly poo rant, which I thought was a nice touch. Here's a few more um, greatest coaching rants of all time. Coastal Carolina's David Bennett said he wants more dogs, not cats. So I told our players, I tried to let it out the front door. Meow, meow, the cat's still going crazy in there. And I told our players, you need to be more like a dog. We don't need a bunch of cats in here. Meow, looking in the mirror. Do I look good? I got my extra bands on. I got my other shoes on. Be a dog. We don't need no meows. We don't need no cats. You know, it's always funny to me about the dog. That's hilarious, by the way. But that's a big combine question, isn't it? Team say, oh, yeah. do you would you rather be a dog or a cat to a, the a prospective NFL player? I yeah, who would say cat? That's what I understand. And who I, I personally am a dog guy. I don't know why people like cats, but you can't. Ask, I mean, the question is, is, do you want to be a dog or a cat? They everyone has to say dog, right? If you say cat, but then you want to go against the grain and say cat, what would you say? Dog. No yeah. one says they got that cat in them. No. <laughs> everyone says they got that dog yeah. in them. Well, Clyde Frazier does say feline quickness. Sure. So there's that. Cat-like, <laughs> yeah, reflexes, yeah. stuff like that. All right, let's move on. Another guy, we're doing our greatest coaching rants of all times. This one is Michigan women's basketball coach Kevin Borseth, who was very mad about a particular rebounding battle. That's how I feel. 
<laughs> Damn sick and tired of getting out rebounded. 25 offensive rebounds. First time we block out, we get called for a damn block out. We're pushing people. Meanwhile, they're on the other court grabbing rebounds, going over the top and grabbing them. We get one offensive rebound, the other we get called for over the back. So we, we don't block out very damn well, and we're not getting called one or the other. That's where I'm frustrated. That's where my whole frustration comes in, offensive rebounds. The entire thing came down to offensive rebound. They got every <coughs> offensive rebound, we didn't get one of them. What else do you want to know? <laughs> it always helps a good coaching rant if there's a prop, you know? Pen, table there to pound, the papers to shuffle. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and you, you see also all these coaches, you can just feel their eyes exploding out of their head during these by hearing it. Coaches got to relax. What the heck? Well, when, with that, we give you, uh, maybe this will be our last one, Bob Knight of course, uh, to an NCAA employee who said he wouldn't be at the presser after the tourney loss. This is 1995. Who the hell told you I wasn't going to be here? I'd like to know. Do you have any idea who it was? Yeah, I do, Coach. Who? I'll point them out to you in a while. They were from Indiana, right? No, they're not. No, weren't from Indiana, and you didn't get it from anybody from Indiana, did you? Could we please... No, I'll I'll handle this the way I want to handle it now that I'm here. You f***ed it up to begin with. Now just sit there or leave. I don't give a what you do. Now... Back to the game. <laughs> Jeez. Cut an intimidating figure, that Bob Knight. So anyway, some of our great coaching rants of all time. Yeah. And if you want to go vote on who had the best one, um, again, our picks for the show, you can go to at Maggie Pearl on Twitter. Yeah, it, those are all great. Do I seem a little depressed right now? Did you notice a pal come over the room? Oh, no. What happened? You just saw something? <sighs> yes, yeah, the NFL just tweeted out the opening Friday night matchup of the season in Brazil. It's your Eagles. Taking on now, it's the Packers, not the Browns. <gasps> the Browns screwed up. So we got to face Jordan Love and the Packers Friday night. I mean, the Browns was tough enough. This crap is crap, as, as we say around <laughs> yeah. here, because we lose a home game against the Packers to play in Brazil. I told you this whole time you should have been more upset about this, that you mm. lose a home game to go to Brazil. I wasn't worried about the Browns, but the Packers? Maybe it's good to get them early. This crap is crap. <laughs> what is that from, anyway? That's one of the great Maggie and Pearl off rants. <laughs> it's EJ's. Uh, uh, I don't remember. But this how else did everybody crap. screw this up for a month? It was the Eagles and the Browns, and now it's, they mentioned something yesterday. Then today, NFL proudly tweets out, we have Jordan Love going against Jalen Hurts. I don't know. Maybe someone in Brazil complained. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, the Browns are going to be a good team, but maybe they're like, listen, can you? Want some offense. Yeah, yeah, right. And obviously, the graphic that the NFL put out is a big picture of Jordan Love and Jalen Hurts, but it's the front of their jersey, and if it was the back, you know what it would say. Yeah, you've been waiting forever for this. Love hurts. Hashtag, hashtag dad joke. Come on. Who's with me? Can't believe that's Not how me. we're ending the show today. We did this great show. Four hours of awesome content. Yeah. Ends on a love dad hurts. joke. It could have been Love Stinks, which was by the Jay Giles Band in the One Hit Wonder Tournament. <laughs> Thank you, EJ Stewart. Thank you to Pete Pilati, Andrew Bogush, Andrew Kaplan, Widows Coffee Drinkers, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Macarena has a boyfriend who they call, who they call by the name of Vitorino. You're in a five minute.